Happy birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to happy us. Happy birthday to go on, Trot, take it away. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Hello. Oh, Welcome. I know. <laughs> Welcome everyone to six years of high rollers D D. We've wow, been going wow, six wow, years. Wow. 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 Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't have the effect. We're here today <laughs> to do it for another six. Not all today, but this is six the first day. Six more years. Six more years. Oh. Exactly. That. So thank you, Chris Trot. We're up for re-election. Uh, get your votes in. We're the only candidate, so we win. Uh, I'm Mark Humes, <laughs> also known as Sherlock Humes. I'm your Dungeon Master, and I'm joined by these clowns. Uh, they're not NFTs. You can't buy them. They're not minted, but they are clowns. <laughs> I am. Um, <laughs> I'm <mean>, cheap. <laughs> Very cheap. Uh, we got <laughs> Rhiannon as Sentry. We've got Tom as Kilek. We've got Katie as Ooh. Ayla. We've got Trot as Lucius and Kim as Nova. For how much longer? Who knows? But that's who they're playing today. Uh, so anyway, what? <laughs> welcome. <laughs> that's honest as hell. Welcome <laughs> to Aramis. Uh We're here to play oh some God. Dungeons and Dragons. Um, it's been a good old time, and that's what we're going to do today. The first thing we're going to talk about, though, is Chris Trot's going to tell you about our sponsor, who's been with us NFT our oh. lives. No, no, <laughs> uh, no. It's d, &D Beyond. Pin, NFT. Oh. <laughs> hey, d, d Beyond. They haven't gone down the path of NFTs. So then they're just they're just the gift that keeps on giving, aren't they? They just keep dishing out the good shit. What kind I'm of good shit, Chris Rock? Well, I'm sure you've heard of this other TTRPG show that's going on at the moment. It's called uh, Critical Role. That's the one. Uh, they've already released <laughs> <laughs> the Explorer's Guide to Wild Mount, which yes. explores oh. the Dwendalen Empire, but. That's for what? Dwendalen? <laughs> Dwendalen. <laughs> That's up there with Glenodal for me. Glenodal um, Empire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. Chris, that I don't one. know. I feel like that one is like, that he pronounced it as it's, as it's written. So. Dwendalian. <laughs> Dwendalen. <laughs> Dwendalen. Yep. Dwendalen Empire. <laughs> but there's Dwendalen far Empire. more out there for you to mispronounce. What? Ento. No. <laughs> The Call of the Nether Deep, which oh. is an upcoming adventure book. It's the first adventure book set it's in this neither world. Neither Deep. <laughs> Sorry, Neither Deep, Neither Dop. <laughs> that will soon release. <laughs> fuck me on D and D Beyond, where you get to roam the wastes of Exorhas, Marquette, and the Nether Dop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're eager to lap up every detail of Notherdop in preparation for its release on March 5th. Toynth. Don't worry, d, d Beyond are on it. They've got a very useful article without pronunciations detailing all these key locations for you to per peruse. So thank you, d, d Beyond, for these useful articles. Brilliant. And also, of course, all the incredible tools that we use every week. Yes. Right? Mm. Like Very fluffy so. dice. Fluffy like dice. Fluffy, fluffy dice. dice on NFT. And everything else. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, very yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to because I know I know some of the I think I know some of the people who have worked on the adventure, but I was trying to find like a list of like the actual uh people that have worked on Call of the Nether Deep. Um, Carl Sagan. As far <laughs> as I know, Carl Sagan I hasn't worked on it, no. Um <laughs> As far what? as I know, I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Pretty, isn't he dead? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. dead. Very yeah. dead. Yeah. Very dead. Yeah. yeah. Very, very dead. Yeah. Really dead. Um, it's not binary. It's he's extremely. I can't find a list of them. <laughs> good... It's not even like a recent, like you know. <laughs> While uh, we're in lockdown, popped off. <laughs> popped, popped his clogs. No, I, I I just know that there's a bunch of really good people. I was trying to find like an actual uh, full list, but there's some very good people that worked on the adventure. They've, they've got a very good team that work on all the critical role stuff, uh, like uh, James Heck and, and Hannah and, and a bunch of other very cool people. Um, so definitely go and check it out. It's going to be really cool. Uh, and yeah, D&D &D Beyond, we've been using it for years now. Honestly, couldn't go back to playing without it. Uh, the combat tracker, the encounter builder, the character sheet maker literally makes it so much easier to play fifth edition D, D. it is the best 
Don't and they listen to feedback me. as well. Like Mark had an yeah. issue with the new encounter system, which combines the combat tracker and the encounter bit, which Mark knew, obviously, and it's called Encounters now. Uh, and he responded, and they fixed it already, which is great. They didn't mm. fix it because of me. It was already an issue being fixed. They fixed it because of I... Mark and his <laughs> ego, who yeah. was like, don't you know who I <laughs> am? Not... Yeah. All the yeah, other four are holes about it. But no, <laughs> it was great. I, did, I went full diva. Um, but yeah, no, it's really good. Uh, you should go and check it out and use the link, which is in chat at, or in the video description below. If yes. you use that link oh. and you buy a subscription or you buy a book, it says that you came from us and that's really awesome. Um, I'm not going to, we're not going to bang on too much about other stuff. Um, the only, the only, there's one major thing to talk about, which is, it is our sixth year anniversary. We've been doing Woo. this six years now. It's also, Woo. it's also another little special milestone. Oh, it's a special oh. it's a special um, boy. Here we go. Well, it was a couple of days ago. Tom turned 30. He's a birthday boy. Hey. He's 30 now. There he is. 30 now. He's, he's the only one. One of us. One of us. Birthday. Birthday. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Dear. You should know um, that we went for dinner last night and uh, someone at another table came in with a nice cake that had 30 on it and a nice dinosaur and we went, ah, <laughs> we got you nothing. <laughs> you like, cake. Yeah, yeah. Like, cake for me? No. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, tell everyone he thought story, it was for that's... him. Mm. <laughs> but we did <laughs> buy him hey. Borgies. He got Borgies. Yeah. We they got, got Borgies. They were at the same place as us. We got Where's the same Borgies. Borgies. Yeah. Rhiannon and it wasn't for your sweet. birthday. <laughs> um, Rhiannon gave Tom a very sweet present. You made uh, a set of dice, a set of uh, of of yeah, Helix dice. Yeah, I got some my dice. That's, that's really nice. very nice. Oh, very very dice. cute. Uh, you got oh, yeah, some man. sugar Fucking from me, cake. Tom. You did, you did give me some sugar. <laughs> you gave me some sugar. <laughs> <laughs> On that, on that bombshell. Uh, oh wait, no, moves. hang on. Uh, there's a there's, uh, there's a studio update on Patreon. Patreon a brand new studio update on yeah. Patreon. Oh. Uh, I was just moving on from the Trot gave you sugar thing. I wasn't moving on necessarily to the recap, for sure. Yeah. Oh, but, I mean uh, that's yeah. what the studio update is. That's it's it. an hour long video. <laughs> 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 uh, that's so why yeah, it's on Patreon. <laughs> I finished very early. Patreon. <laughs> 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 But yeah, very, very cool. Uh, Set pretty much in place. Got a little couple of tweaks mm. to make. Got a little bit, little bit, some bobs to do here and there. God, but, I just uh... need to pay. <laughs> yeah, don't show, don't um, show you What's pay. your credit card um. number? <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. Check out the Patreon. Support us on Patreon. See the studio updates in real time. That's how the internet works. Uh, and uh, see us when the studio is done, so and in completion mm. and getting ready to go. The tome is done too. Mm. Tome is done. Mm. Tome is done. We're getting that's being mm. sent off, uh, sent to Kim. Not straight the to Kim. writing. No, but the tome is yeah. apart from the eight hundred fourteen names. Shall I show it off? Yeah, you might as well. Sure. Yeah, sure. If you've got it, this is da, the, da, uh, da, da, the da, da, da. pillars of creation tome that we mentioned in our fundraiser. Look at uh, it. Look how made, cool it is. Make want to make sure I like highlight who made it for us. This is made by Brian at um, Umbra Armories, uh, which you can find on Facebook. I think is mainly where they're found. Um, for, a chap that I know through LARP, who does a load of cool stuff for Empire LARP, and he made us that Umbra Armories. Um, I will put it in. If you're a patron, and you have been a patron. Uh, in December of last year, when we did our fundraising, Kim is going to write all of those names in that book, and it will be treasured forever in our studio. <laughs> yeah. Can I? Yes. Since since we're on the topic, can I just point out that I never got High Rollers birthday wishes because we didn't stream in December, so um, I got yeah, it's out gone last now. Year. I didn't get cake. Yeah, it's gone now. I'm gonna write all your all your things. I didn't get anything. Gonna write all your names, nah. crying on them. <laughs> what you need to do Kim, is move your birthday to February along with the cool birthday squad and then you get yeah. I want to. I do. Yeah. I do Just want to. It. Yeah. Yeah. Or well, like, maybe no, in June. Up. So it's in yeah. the middle of the year. Just move it. <laughs> hey, little well, we're we're here now. Thank you. We were supposed to stream that weekend, but someone Something was unwell, happened. I think. And it was probably me. Yeah, everyone was dead. Um, 
So yeah. it's just the usual jingle jam, tired, unwell. Listen, Blech. birthdays are a social <laughs> Thank construct. you, everyone in chat. <laughs> 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 uh, Move it to June. When you're as old as me, when you're as old as me, there's not many left. So I've got to, you know, cash it <laughs> oh in when God. I can. Oh, my God. Jesus. Have a second birthday like the Queen, Kim. Have a second birthday in June. <laughs> okay, I will. Now, this week's again. birthday boy is Tom because he's old now, like us. Join us in the no, 30s club. club. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Soon, I'm old Rhiannon. like some of you. Soon. I'm not old like the rest of you. Two more to go. <laughs> there's, there's two. Older. There's oh. two. <laughs> we established there's two oh, areas. Gosh. There's two two parts. A there's two tiers yeah. to it. Like two me and Kim. age brackets. <laughs> yeah. Uh, demographics. <laughs> I'm trotting Up there, here. Katie, and then Rhiannon is down Those that get yeah. free bus fare and those like that do <laughs> yeah. Right. That's enough shenanigans. Anyone older is basically already dead. <laughs> true. It's wow. true. Um, wow. Yeah. yeah. We're just, you know, we're just decrepit liches, uh, Kim. It's exactly. Fine. Mm. Right. Yeah, we're just holding Any on. more shenanigans? <laughs> Any... No, we should probably Any get more... the show on the road before you... Let's get the show on the road. People hate it when we, uh, <sighs> we bang on about nonsense. So let us play some Dunduns, do a recap, and then Whoa. play some Dungeons and Dragons. Whoa. 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 Yeah. Whoa. Welcome back to Arois. As the party have travelled through the Feywild, aiding their friend Rosemeadow in discovering her true nature and rescuing a family of centaur from a pair of undead spirit riders. An unexpected visitor to the battle, a simulacra of Zarkira, mage and commander of the Valkyrian Empire, arrived injured and attempted to sow more chaos. But ultimately, our heroes prevailed. The spirits disappeared, the simulacrum destroyed. Returning to their other Feywild task, the party have begun to travel towards the city-state of Heartspire, home of Thalia Whisperwind, who fled centuries ago, having been cursed by a powerful sorceress, following her terrible actions as the princess here. To undo the curse, the party escort Thalia to confront Mesmera, the woman who cursed her, with suspicions that more may be at play. Just before reaching the enormous briar wall that surrounds Heartspire, some of the party travelled through a valley of tall flowers, whereupon they were confronted by Armador, an awakened dandelion who sees himself as a valiant knight. Armador is a citizen of Heartspire, but was thrown out by a group of false knights after taking Armador's beloved prisoner. Mistaking Lucius for an Eladrin lord, Armador has agreed to try and aid the party in getting back inside the city. And before the enormous wall that looms before them, the party have taken a moment to rest. Uh, and that is where we kick off. Um, I think that at some point, you know, as you guys are kind of finishing your long rest, um, <clears throat> you can see uh, Thalia is definitely sort of in a worse state than she has been. Um, she kind of occasionally she's like coughing and you can see like sort of like blood you know black and speckled blood uh where she coughs up she can no longer move her shoulder not just her arm but like her entire shoulder has gone sort of numb um and you can sort of hit begin to hear sort of a, a bit more of a sort of labored breathing uh armador both armador and thalia however uh thalia will will kind of say to everyone <clears throat> before we head in um if there are any questions if there's anything you want to know about Mesmera, myself, or the city. Anything now is probably the best time. <clears throat> I'm not sure how much use I'm going to be once we get inside and, and this progresses. So it may be a good chance to ask now. Um, and then little Armador will also crop up. Like, Indeed. 
my lord requests any knowledge of the city, I would be glad to share it with my saviors. The little dandelion head, his little yellow fuzzy uh, flower petal head sort of bobbing as he sort of looks in everyone's direction. Well, Lucius, my lord, ask away. Oh, of course. Um, in terms of strategy approaching this castle, of course we want to get to Mesmera with as little obstacles in the way as possible. Maybe stealth is our option. But well, there's a lot of us. So, what usually guards the areas? Do you know the patrols, anything like that? The knights? I have been absent for several uh, years oh, you're now, you're my right. lord. But I do know that there are there are the guardians that stand in front of the palace itself. Uh, they watch the gates. As far as I know, none have been able to uh, approach at any point recently. Then there are these these knights. They are, they are false. Their hands do not feel like hands. They feel like pincers and claws beneath, beneath illusion and disguise. But they patrol. There are not too many of them, but they do seem to be... They do not seem to be affected by the rules that Mesmera has laid down. Mm. Uh, they are able to fly. They are able to injure others, destroy things. Things that the rest of us are, are bound against. How can they do such a thing? It must be the will of Lady Mesmera. She is the one who has placed the rules upon Hansbire. There must be some clause that permits her knights to break these rules. So, wait. Are you saying that we can't hurt anyone in there? The rules of three. One such commandment by, laid by Lady Mesmera is any harm done to a living being shall be returned to the attacker thrice fold. It prevents us from harming each other or coming to blows for petty quarrels. And what of the other rules? There is the rule of grounding. No creature in Heartspire can fly. We do not understand why, but it has been in place for hundreds of years. And then finally, uh, there is the rule of destruction. One cannot destroy the property of another. Right, thank you. Hmm. Mm. Okay. Bali will uh, sort uh, of... Thalia will kind of, she's been listening to this. Uh, if you have a question, Tom, by, by all means, go ahead. But I was going to ask, the, the winged, taloned creatures that he was describing, I saw mm. some flying in, like, the distance when we were coming down here. I'm guessing that checks mm. out with what he was describing, well, right? Well, yeah, the things you saw flying were, they looked like elves. They looked like, you know, elves, yeah. very Eladrin, Feywild-looking elves, but they were, they were clad in, like, insectoid armor. Like, they kind of had, like, almost, like, grasshopper green armor and wings. But they had hands. They had, like, you know, soft elven hands and long sort of elven spears and things like that. You, you wouldn't have said that they, you know, you, they didn't look like they had they claws the or... Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. <clears throat> Thalia will kind of, when she hears about the rules, she'll say, if <clears throat> if Mesmera has, <clears throat> if, if these knights are able to break these rules, it's likely that you will be able to, the rules won't apply to anything you do to them. <clears throat> if you're worried, if these knights can harm others, you should be able to harm them without the rules affecting you. <clears throat> the rules of the Archfey are normally bound both ways. Uh, if, if, if a creature is bound by the rules, it cannot be, uh, it cannot break them itself. It must be right. that they are excluded somehow. <clears throat> well. Do, do you know of any uh, creatures here that have claws, like Amador said? <clears throat> Nothing like I can claws. think of. There are, I mean, there are many, there are many fey creatures here. <clears throat> and she kind of coughs and a little bubble comes up. There are, there are goblins, there are, there are pixies, there are, there are beasts that have been awoken that might have things, but nothing, nothing that I think he describes, and especially if they are the knights themselves, they should be elven, elantrin warriors, they should be hobgoblins, they should be, they should be humanoids. <clears throat> Something's clearly Something's, changed. Something, definitely. Well... I personally think we should try and lure uh, any of these knights, flying knights, out of the castle so that we can dispatch them without everyone else witnessing it and thus drawing unnecessary attention to ourselves. Or maybe we can kind of bring them into street corners or around the backs of things, you know, that sort of thing. 
Well, strictly speaking, even if everything does spot us, they can't harm us, we can't harm them. They would be bound by Mesmera's rules, surely. Um, I think that the, the Armador literally said that, that that the knights aren't bound by like he said that no, the, the knights, knights aren't, but yeah. everyone else like oh you're right everyone else yeah, yeah yeah are they the only authority in the castle that can oh, yes. arrest oh yes 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 the knights are serve serve the archway they serve Lady Mesmera oh right Indeed. the rest of us are citizens poets artists lovers these are the people that Heartspire attracted long long ago. Sadly, none have really been able to enter or leave since, but uh, there are some new arrivals, such as myself. I am quite new to the city, having been awoken by Lady Mesmera herself. Oh, is that so? Yes, she is. She is a strange monarch. For centuries, she will be hidden away in the palace. She would not leave. Then, at whims, she seems to leave. Her mood is mercurial. When she created me, she was full of kindness and happiness, spreading gifts and flowers amongst the people. She awoke me and many of my other flower brethren and animals to boot to become new citizens of Heartspire. But I have heard the others speak that there have been other times when she has been darker, more angry, more punishing. Mm. Exactly when were you awoken, Armador? Oh! Um, perhaps uh, a decade, two decades ago. I mean, that checks. Okay. Fair enough. In which case, if the rules are that strict, we could just enter the castle and deal with the knights that undoubtedly will try and kick us out. The knights do patrol the city as well. They, they have small patrols that fly overhead and patrol right. the street. We'll just have to quickly move towards the castle and deal with anything en route, I guess. You know how much I like to, you know, fight things, hurt people, if they're in, our, in my way, in our way. But Nova and Thalia, uh, was your plan to maybe try and reason with Miss Myra in some way? Because if we go in um, hammer swinging, uh, I think that know. it is it is as much a case of I do not think we will be able to fight Miss Myra, Ayla. <clears throat> she will be bound by these rules. You, if you harm her, <clears throat> that'll be that harm will be redirected to you threefold. <clears throat> she will even. She could even alter her rules. She could make it that you cannot harm her at all. Uh, as long as she is in Heartspire, as long as she is the Archfey of, of Heartspire, she can bend these rules quite... There is some quite degree of power there. This is not a, a matter that you will be able to resist these like they are spells. They are, they, they are like gravity or physics. Uh, she can simply make something it she can make something it is that way uh, you will probably need to that. use guile and and you will need to use cunning to maybe try and convince her or we I, I certainly intend to speak with her as best as i can but it may be that we need to use guile to convince her to change these rules to suit our needs better uh, mm. as we need them i don't have that I just have anger. So, what I'm saying is that if we go in there and kill all of her guards, that's not going to make it very easy for us to, you know, talk. If, yeah. Well, just also, from experience, in... we don't like it when we do that, you know? Mm. If we're coming in from the angle that we need to end this circle of violence, because it's just, it's destructive, it's endless, it just begets more violence. Yes, Ayla, I agree. Coming in with more violence is not really the way to convince people that stopping. And violence. you know that's painful for me to say because I really do want to just go in there and just kick off. But I appreciate bigger that. picture, Thalia. Not maybe such a good idea. Although if it does hit the fan, I will swing. From the sounds of things, of what this our our new dandelion companion has said. There is something odd about these knights, and I've never known an Eladrin knight to, to enjoy, and certainly no no knight of Heartspile, 
granted it has been many centuries since I've been here, there's no heart knight of Heartspire that would enjoy torturing uh, uh, an awoken creature and separating it from somebody that they love. That is antithesis to, to Heartspire's nature. Heartspire is... <clears throat> It is the city of love. It is a city of, of, of following your desires, of, of being with the people that you care for. Um, a knight, a knight of Heartspire wouldn't wouldn't stand for that. So either could, these knights are be... mind controlled or something like that. Could they could they perhaps be Zarkira's forces? I mean, we've seen Zarkira's been here, and if anyone loves torture, it's Zarkira. Um, and it's she's possible Mesmera may have made beast. some sort of alliance with Zarkira. It's possible. I don't know. Re you muted. Well. Uh -oh. Um. <laughs> these are the guardians outside the tower. Were they were they in Heart Spire when you were here, Thalia? Yes, although they're they're not guardians as you are, Sentry. I, I feel I should point this out. These are not. Um, I think guardian is is used more as the the actual descriptive term rather than a, the being itself. See. They're stone statues. Uh, they're sort of uh, golems uh, that protect the city gates. Okay. Uh, when when I was young, when I was the princess here, they were just golems. Mesmera may have altered them she may have improved them she may have i don't know she may have replaced them but when i was here there was a pair of golems uh, a lion and an elk um the large 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 statues that would come to life Th thalia um it's a bit of a sensitive question but <clears throat> does does succession matter here does does royalty and bloodline <clears throat> and true succession matter <clears throat> it's tricky within heart spire <clears throat> um it comes into the nature of the very nature of the things like the rules and the fey beings in this place. When my when my mother and father, when I turned them to stone, uh, they were no longer they could no longer be the monarchs. Um, there, in theory, I should have become the next archfey. Somehow, Mesmera gained that power instead, and she, that's what she used to brandish this curse on me, my former curse. Um, I have a feeling that it is because Mesmera was beloved by the people here, and I was not. Um, Mesmera was truly loved by the people, and it's one of it's why I was so envious of her. It's why I did the awful things I did to her because I was jealous. Uh, she was beautiful and kind and very powerful, talented, and uh, and the other people loved her. And I think that when my mother and father could no longer become the monarch, because Heartspire is a place of love, because it is a place of, of desire and, and uh, beauty and art, I feel like Mesmera became the, the Archfey. Hmm. I was just In wondering if there, was a, if there was an argument we could take about succession, but as you say, it, it is a place ruled by emotion, so... There's a place mm. very much ruled by that. I am... My only hope is that if Ms. Mera has truly sort of become a, a sort of broken or, or twisted person, my still hope is that the Knight of Love may, may still appear to aid us if necessary. I've told you before that death, love, these concepts can have physical manifestations here in the Feywild. <clears throat> uh, vengeance, too, could also have a manifestation. Uh... <clears throat> Perhaps, perhaps, if there may still be allies of these these sort of beings that, <clears throat> if they sent something, they may come to our aid. But I don't know. It does sound like Heartspire is not the place it once was. Perhaps it's, perhaps it being a beacon of beauty and love and desire has has waned somewhat. So, moving forward with a plan. I think. We just attempt to enter Heartspire like anyone else and just make our way towards the castle. And if we come up against any sort of friction or guards, then we request to speak with Mesmera. And may, do we announce that Thalia is here? That would certainly grant us an audience. Oh, well, I mean, if emotion uh, manifests in this city, uh, I think... Mesmera finding out Thalia has returned is going to change the rules very quickly against us. Um, so we disguise her then until the time's right. 
I think that's the better idea. So then how do we get an audience with someone that could be hiding in her castle for another century? Well, she might recognize me um, when I tried to connect with her. She she looked directly at me. She saw me. Okay. I, I don't know if that we could use that or if that's again something like I should be hidden or something. She she was furious. I have never felt pure anger like that when she looked at me. Well, taking that on board, I think maybe we'll cover you both up because <laughs> uh, once again that could manifest in a very dramatic fashion uh, against us. So, <laughs> uh, well, actually, uh, when she saw you, did she know this was in connection with Thalia? I I start I tried, I tried to say something, but it's as if she knew exactly. She knew everything. She saw through me. She saw. I, I don't know. It was. It's. It's difficult. There was so much emotion you're, you're, and so you're... many images in my head. I think, as your question was about Thalia, wasn't it? Because you have to ask the question and then, yeah. with contact on the plane, I think it was about Thalia, <laughs> and that's yeah. why how she knew. And so she she sent you the like, oh, you want to know about Thalia? Do you? Here you go. Yeah. She Rage. she knows I'm connected to Thalia. Right. Okay. Um... <sighs> And given that she put the second curse on Thalia, she can probably put two and two together. She could curse us all. Oh, oh. <clears throat> I wouldn't. I wouldn't worry that my curse would be. It would not be easy for her to pass the curse that she's done to me onto you. <clears throat> like I said, things like emotions have great power here. Her hatred for me was so strong. I think it enabled her to, which is why that your your god your your goddess Titan. I'm not sure what she is. Sayana was unable to break it. Um, she was she was infueled by that. Uh, she won't harbor that same hatred against you. Right. But she would be. She probably can use powerful magics against you. Maybe not to directly harm you, but she, <clears throat> as long as she doesn't directly hurt you, she can probably still use <clears throat> powerful magic. Maybe we could request some kind of diplomacy meeting with her as kind of an Aroas, Lunaria, you know, anti-Starbane alliance type thing. Maybe we could use that as a guise, perhaps? Yes, hoping that they haven't already succumbed. True. With the changes yeah, to the nights. Yeah, depends exactly where Starbane has talked to her recently. I guess we could find out that way if they have. We could perhaps not suggest our intentions, merely that we wish to open communication and have a dialogue mm. in a diplomatic fashion. Mm. And until we get an audience, we won't disclose why. We are here doing business and talking. <laughs> we can test our alliance by just walking in there, dropping a couple Praxis vows, and seeing how people feel about it. <laughs> I, I'm Does not comfortable with that, Quill. <laughs> um, so we're prepared, Thalia. Mm -hmm. When we, yes. if we get to Mesmera, we disguise you, she has no idea you're there, we open a dialogue with her, and we are face to face, or you are face to face, with the very person that has cursed you, and, I mean, unfortunately, threatens your very life with the poison currently going through your veins, what do you intend to do? You certainly do know how to paint a picture, Gilek. Um, <laughs> I am very much aware of the circumstances. I've spent a lot of time thinking about it. I know what words I want to say to her. I don't think that words are going to be enough, but I know what I, I know what I feel I have to say. I can't know how Mesmero will act. I can't anticipate if there even is a chance to save me. And she kind of squeezes Nova's hand when she says that. Like, that needs to be a reality that you all accept, that that might not happen. But I feel that it is a responsibility that I owe this. 
having learnt how wrong, how cruel, how awful I was, it is a responsibility to at least speak to her. And I I don't expect her to accept accept it. I don't expect her to forgive me. I don't expect her to suddenly change her mind. This is something I feel I have to do. If it if there is a way to convince her, I'll take it. But I think this is more a case of <clears throat> Knowing who she is, knowing what she can do with the crown. If anything, I feel I have we have to try and save her. What I did to her long ago has hurt her badly. And I feel like there is a person that needs to be saved. And she I think she'd look at you, Quill, and say something like, What was it your book said? Something you said something about your book. It helps people find lost things. I think she's pretty lost right now. I just wanted to make sure. I didn't mean to paint such a grim picture, but we need to go into this place with open hearts and open minds. Uh, if emotions run high and we get there and you switch to anger, you oh. come in rage. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about that. I promise you. There's no anger left, there's just shame and guilt. Okay, um, in that case, the plan is to sneak in through the front door? Well, not so much not sneak. Not very good at sneak, so I think just walk in. Just walk Make in more accurate. and keep Thalia covered. Yeah, that's pretty much what I meant. Uh, okay, I mean, disguises then. Cloaks? You are ready, my friends. I shall lead you. Amador just Thank you. Amador, wouldn't it be best if the knights don't see you either? I do not fear them, my lord. They have taken my beloved from me. I shall strike at them. They took me by surprise last time. They will not do so again. This could hinder hmm. our progress somewhat. Uh, I think perhaps having some... <laughs> I mean, Ayla has literally felt what this guy's blows are like. And it was it was like one point in time. It's like he's a dandelion. He's not. He, he has a sword. You don't know if he's like I don't know yeah, how to do anything with it. No, it's it's not it's not a concern for anybody in the city currently. I won't say that to so that he can hear it. But I'll be like, <laughs> fine. I imagine if you intend to head to Lady Mesmera, the center of the palace. Our paths will diverge. My beloved will be being kept somewhere else. She is being kept somewhere else. Once I have really, gotten really you into the city, I will point you in the direction of the palace, and then, my friends, we will part ways. Thing oh, is, is that our um, situation is a little bit time sensitive, you know, on mm -hmm. account of Thalia's yes, you should go dying. Save, save your companion. Do not worry. I will rescue Polinella. Well, we would we would help you if you know you wanted to wait till we'd done our bit first. But I don't feel like you want to do that, and that's ah, fine. Warrior of the Star Emperor, I do not need your. Help. Definitely not. Don't call me that. I will kick you. Now, save this emotion. Stem. <laughs> All of us <laughs> reserve stem. every ounce of energy we have. You, brave knight, to save Polinella. And us to cure the curse laid upon Thalia. Truly an epic tale. It will last for centuries, my lord. In fact, perhaps, perhaps when all this is done, I shall put aside the blade and take up the pen. Become a poet. Be an inspiration for the generations to come. I will be an inspiration for my beloved. Well, I, I best be off. We press get going. <laughs> Be off. <laughs> no time like the present. Let's skedaddle. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So you guys make your way out, and Dandelion, uh, you make your way to the uh, giant briar wall. The briar wall is about a hundred feet high. It encircles the city. 
and I mean, it looks thick. This is a tangled mess of long knotted thorns, um, dense bramble, thick vines uh, that just seems to stretch up and is is not completely impassable, uh, but is dense, like thick, like, you know. Um, <laughs> Armador looks up and just kind of like makes a... This way, my friends! He's so small, and he's a dandelion, so he just slips through the fucking thorns. Like, <laughs> just... uh, uh, um, Amador? Hello? Amador? Yes? You hear, like a uh, you hear like a muffled, and then he comes tottering out. Um, yeah, the, the, uh, it, yeah, there's no way. The, the, it, I mean, you can fit, but look at Sentry here. No Ooh. offense, Sentry, you're huge. <laughs> Yeah, um, there's no holes big enough to fit me through there. Ah. Mm. Ulster mm. said Indeed fire. Indeed, a quandary. Oh, oh when you answers. when you say fire, like Armador actually looks scared. Like his little little flower head trembles, and he kind of like backs off and maybe hides behind Lucius's leg. Fla flame, flame! No, we do not. We do not need fire. <laughs> that might draw a lot of attention, especially if the whole thing erupts in flame. Indeed, indeed, my lord. It's too much attention, too much attention from fire. Yes, no fire. Fire, very bad. We have some sharp weaponry we could perhaps cut through. Yeah, I mean, it, it does it just look like normal sort of plants. Like, it definitely looks like you can you can hack through. Oh, It'd probably like... be quite tiring to do that. Yeah. Um, well, depending on how thick the wall is, but, like, if you're doing that for, like, you know, you know, quite a lengthy period of time, like, it will probably tire most normal people out. I say normal people because Sentry and Ayla can probably do it for like fucking three days straight like Hercules and not be bothered. Um, but yeah, normal people would probably get quite tired doing that. Should we see if we can cut through? And if you get exhausted, we'll um, think of an alternative. Sounds like a plan. Whilst in, uh, in the wall of thorns. Yeah. Great plan. Cool. Carve a hole. I mean, I can hit it I don't have a sharp object. I have a very heavy hammer. Yeah, I, I mean, try Nova, my best. Nova Quill probably would just immediately be like, the hammer is going to do nothing. Like, it's it, it will tear, but it's like these, these walls definitely aren't going to really be affected by a hammer. It needs like a, you you need can, like a slash weapon or something. You can separate, pull, push, move. You, can, yeah, you can't use the you can hammer, try. but you can use your two hammers. Do you call your arms hammers? No, no one does. That's weird. How? No, really? Do they not have names? No, this, a, this is a hammer. This is an arm, Quill. This is an arm. Oh, arm. I, just then. I just thought you'd nickname them. No, who would nickname them? Her Majesty's them? Rose. Weird. Yeah, weapons get nicknames. Arms, no, that's weird. That's just weird oh. and unnecessary. <laughs> I name my wings. <laughs> I'm you quite curious wings. what you've named the wings. I'm not telling you, it's dumb. No, oh, I have come to on, <laughs> Quill. No, no, you said it was stupid. I, I don't think it's stupid. I, I think they are just. It's just. They're just called wings. I didn't say it was stupid. I, th I think it's fantastic. Well, I'll tell you later then. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, no time like the present. I'll start. Yeah cutting with my captain's sword right. captain's when, command. When Lucius, when you move up to the Briarthorn wall, this didn't happen when Armador got close to it, but when you get close to it, you do see like the the thorns and the vines do try and like grab at you. They do try and like make a oh. swipe at you, basically. Uh, so They're 14 living. to hit. Oh, that won't hit, thankfully. Okay, so you managed to kind of like pull yourself back. Like, you don't think it would have like, you know, there's definitely, you know, there's there's thorns and barbs and things like that on there, but there, there is some element of being animated here. Um. Hmm. We have an issue. We are not citizens of Heartspire, so I assume this is this effect is occurring to all of us. I mean, it could also be that Armador himself is a plant, so these the, and the wall just it doesn't think to attack it because he is a plant. That's the other thing. Fire. Yeah, I mean, fire would certainly fire. work. Like, Armador was terrified of it. You imagine it would be quite effective against, you know, wall of plant. It would set our, you know, tone entering the city walls. We entered through fire to have diplomatic talks <laughs> with Mesmera. 
Well, there isn't another way to get into the city currently, right? There's no open part of this wall. How are you supposed to get in? Um, People don't. That, that's the thing. Is ever since Mesmera took place, like I think Thalia mentioned this, and Armador's probably you know Armador can say it. But yeah, like since Mesmera took place, these walls have come up. Nobody's gone in and out. Like the city has been closed off to everyone. Hmm. No, no, no physical like travel has taken place. Can we get a different perspective so that perhaps an arcane gate or some such? Could be created on the other side. Mm, I'd have we... to see the second point. I can might... what? So if perhaps we fly up, enlarge and have a look, yeah. and then come back down. Yeah, that's the wall is a hundred feet tall. Entry. The wall is a hundred <laughs> feet tall. Boot boost will not work. <laughs> Mega <laughs> enlarge. Even big, like Sentry's like. Can you see? <laughs> like, <laughs> no. What do you see? Small wall. Small wall in it. Well, um, we run the risk I of mean, breaking the rules. However, we could, yes, fly up and get a well, view. If I fly, we're not flying in. Up. We're only I, flying direct yeah. up. No rule there that we know of. Might be if someone um, falls down, it wasn't me. You know. it's just... Also, what's Mark, the first point pass... of Arcane Gate? Wouldn't it be in the sky, a hundred feet up? No, below us. No, I just have to look and land. She, she, she chooses a point within yeah. range, and then the portal yeah. forms there. As long as I can see it. Chooses the other one. Yeah. She's yeah. just okay. looking over the wall to somewhere do... on the other side. Boys, um, do, do you remember when you were flying towards here? Do you remember how deep the wall went in? I think Lucius is the only one who got close, um, and it was pretty deep. Like it was. It's you know this is maybe 60 80 maybe 100 feet thick like it's it's dense okay. this is like a this is like um, a barrier if i cast levitate and can i kind of like mm. pace like kind of pull my way up i guess i could just fly I'm if just you get to close to the wall slots, like if you get close to that wall mm. it's going to attack you yes. so you can do it from where um, you are and just go straight up like as long as you're like sort of yeah. you know 15 feet away from the wall you can you can do it there and you seem to be safe um, can someone cast fly on me? I just want to conserve my yes. a little bit. I will cast fly at level three. Yeah, so just one person. Yeah, you can target Nova. There you go, Nova. 60 Thank foot you. flying speed. Uh, on the so forehead. I'll like to... mm -hmm. Thank you, Lucius. Um, I would like to fly Somatic. up and see <laughs> how thick this wall is. Yes, give me a second. I just need to check the. I need to check what a perception, passive perception, and stuff is for some. Wait, yes. For what? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, I can use my action to go invisible. So, given that everyone wants stealthiness, go invisible. That's great. All right. Yeah. They can see safe. through it. Probably, okay. yeah. Everything in the Feywild has true sight. Not everything, but a lot of things. Um, so you you levitate up, um, you go invisible, um, you fly up. takes takes a little, you know, a couple of minutes maybe or whatever it is. You know, a minute less than a minute. You fly up. Yeah, you can see that it's about a hundred feet thick. Um, so if you keep going up and like, so you can try and get like a diagonal down. You know, you're probably going up quite high. I think levitate lasts like lasts like a minute or an hour or something. Uh, Lucius has casted fly on me. Oh, yeah. So that's like an hour of flight. So, yeah, you've got plenty of time. So, you have to go up quite high, at which point, yeah, you can see more into the city now. You see at the very mid, in the very heart, uh, the very middle of the city is a sort of round plaza with a huge tower that stretches up into the air. Um, you can see it's full of kind of very fairy tale buildings. So, imagine kind of like Disneyland, uh, kind of very you know, Rapunzel, Sleeping Beauty kind of like medieval village. Colourful roofs, uh, flowers growing everywhere. Um, at this distance, you can't make out any details. You can't see like people necessarily, um, but you can definitely, you know, see a, an outline of a city. There's streets and all kind of stuff like that. Lots of gardens, lots of uh, little sort of like ponds within the city, like public spaces and things like that. Um, theatres, uh, amphitheatres, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, you. I think if you fly up high enough, um, I'm just trying to like do the math here. So it's like a hundred feet that way. You can go up. And what's the range on Arcane Gate? 
I actually don't think I can do it. Um, so... Because I know Dimension Door is 500. Um, 500 it, it's 500 foot, but to uh -huh. cast it, it's choose two points on the ground that you can see, one within 10 feet of you and one within 500 feet. So I could do the 500 foot one, but I can't do the 10 foot one. That is a problem. Yeah. So you um, kind of, as you get to the apex of this, you're like, ah, like, I can't. Uh, yeah, you realize that, like, even though you can yeah. just about see in, uh, you can't. And I unattuned to my helm of teleportation. You did. Dumbass. Um, the one also, time. You, you, you could have actually just use used it. fly on the uh, amethyst lodestone as well. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Lucius. <laughs> Sorry, Lucius, just this is a spell slot. You can actually just get back <laughs> with sorcery points, so it's all right. Um, anyway, uh, but yeah, no, unfortunately, Nova, you, like, you can see in and you can see that, like, yeah, there's the, an incredibly thick wall. Um, you can see the kind of shapes and you can sort of vaguely see a point. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, you, like, ugh, I need to be on the ground to be able to conjure this second portal. Hmm. Uh, so I'll flip now Imagine if you had two arcane gates, right? And you already had one <laughs> that you cast down. there. And then, and then, and then you could look bounce. through that one and then cast it through that portal <laughs> yeah. to the ground. That's thinking with Paul's. I, I am <laughs> thinking, like, I have Misty Step. Could I Misty Step down and, like, make that fast enough that I... You could take one creature action. with you with Dimension Door because you've now seen over the yeah. wall, like, you can visualize the yeah, space, right? Yeah, I could. I can Dimension Door in, um... But I'd still need to see back to bring everyone else in. So, um, yeah. Unless <gasps> Sentry used her not a laser to punch a hole through the wall that I could look through. And then I cast Arcane Gate through that. Like, creating like a, you know. The laser go 100 feet there. I don't think it's long enough to go through so all the way. Yeah. Unless you take Rosemeadow up. Or if Rosemeadow can fly up and see uh, a tree. Uh, if Rosemeadow yeah. can see a tree in the middle, she can transport. Then she'll know that tree, and then she can mm -hmm. use transport via plants. That's some I played a druid last time thinking. That's a Laura. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, that's Wait, Laura thinking she shouldn't be here. But yeah, yeah. She has had a long rest, so she can cast that again. She does have that back. Transport via plants. Uh, I assume Nova comes back down and informs us of all these yeah. issues. When you when you come I back down, in, uh, while yeah. you guys have been thinking about this, Rose Meadow's been talking to Armador, and she's found out that yeah, Armador was brought to life. She was he was awoken by Lady Mismera, mm -hmm. and Rose Meadow's like looking at flowers on the ground and like her horns glowing. She's like <laughs> she's thinking like, oh, could I do that? <laughs> <laughs> But she doesn't. She's just, she's just like, oh, oh, everyone's back, and then you know, just turns her attention to everyone. <laughs> What's the plan? Could I? Um, Sentry. Yeah. Oh, well, well, Rhiannon. Rhiannon's got a thinky face. I think face. Thinking, could I? Could I stone skin myself and then just like sprint a sentry shaped hole through the wall? <laughs> you can try. Yeah, sure. You can certainly try. Yeah. I mean, oh my god, that would be so funny. Yeah, well, absolutely. Day. You can. You can certainly. <laughs> if you want to give that a go. Or could I like push, like push the briar back and let people crawl through with me, and we just go as yeah. a unit? You can try both of those things. It's, you can try whatever you want. Do whatever you want to do, Sentry. <gasps> um, I think, like, if I remember, Stone Skin has a really bullshit material component. Um, which I'm I think in is off. incredibly overpriced. Yeah, it's so overpriced for the spell effects. So don't worry about that. You don't have to spend 100 GP of Diamond Dust. That's, I don't think that that's worth it. So I'm changing it. I won't change uh, Magic Gosh. Missile and Mirror Image, though, Tom. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Rawford said it doesn't work, so I guess it doesn't work. <laughs> what does that yeah. guy know? What does that guy know? Um, he didn't write yeah. it in original rules, did he? <laughs> Uh, What's the plan? No. You want to try Century Kool Aid Man? You want to try Kim Kardashian? <laughs> Kool Aid Man. Are the, is, I, I is there a chance wonder as well. that these these thorns extend into the ethereal plane? Uh, 
me. You'll Maybe. Have to go to you the don't plane to find out. Yeah. Mm. So I could bring four, three of us. Uh, wait, when you cast a spell of eight, I can target up to three willing creatures, including that. I can bring three of us into the ethereal plane. Eight level spell, sure. Oh, okay. But we could go straight through ethereally. That could yeah. work. You have to or, pop into the cereal and see if it's there. I mean, I'm not <laughs> wasting two spell slots on this. <laughs> uh, I will That's quite a pick lot of three people. On it. I'll pick three people, and if it works, Could it works. Burn the wall. But... Spell slots, burn wall. Burn spell slots, burn wall. It's true. I guess, <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, like, the etherealness would be incredibly stealthy. Like, you, you basically be ghosting your way through it, and then you would still be ethereal, mm. you know, once you get to the other side, which could help. Mm. Um, fire might draw attention it is a very big fucking wall and it is you know it's a fairly sized city it's like a small city there's a chance that if you do you know cause like a big fire it would draw some attention but maybe it wouldn't um i guess it comes down to like yeah like what's you know how much stock do you place in like trying to be stealthy how much do you want to avoid combat how much do you want to avoid being noticed versus how much do you want to save your things like spell slots if you do get into a fight yeah that's almost like the game um oh we're playing oh it God. now are we yeah, yeah you're playing it. Really <laughs> finally um, yes nah, i don't think it makes sense to me yeah you might have to explain again <laughs> yeah we'll get there Another six years. Well, I doubt this briar wall is as powerful as a temple of the gods, so etherealness okay. probably would work. Um, that's three people, including myself. Screw you guys. I'm going in. Ethereal. Okay. Um, are you just, you're just casting it? Who, who are you bringing? No, I'm not casting it. I'm just saying oh. that's a plan. I just sure. need to figure out how the rest of you will get through. Um, that's the thing. I can also go ethereal. Oh, that's four. Can go ethereal. So you have uh, you guys, you have you five, plus yeah. Thalia, Kyrie, Big Cat, Rose Meadow. You, maybe you don't want to take all of those people with you. But if you did, there's another four. There's nine of you in total. Let's burn the burn the briar. Burn it all. Burn all. <laughs> I have no I could all You wanna go fire? Well, you go fire? Down. I could also There's dimension door and bring one person with me, and that person would be Thalia. Um, so mm. there's that. If you annoying me, I was I was looking at if you were to dimension door me through, I then bind that area to my book, then go back to the area that you guys are in, which I also bound to the book, and then pick you guys up and then click the book again to go all the way through. But it doesn't work that way. Sorry, guys. <laughs> Can um, I? Hess was like, that. I'm not a Lucius. bus service. <laughs> Chris Trot. Can't wait. Here we go. Chris Trot. Lucius is going to use Tasha's Caustic Brew because it creates a beam. And he's going to, yeah. like a lightsaber, continue to cast it. So tell me how many spell slots that would take up. Caustic so the Brew. And a stream of acid emanates from you in a line 30 feet long and 5 feet wide. Long. Um, in a direction I choose. So I assume if I do six seconds of it, right, I can go six yeah. seconds carving an arch. Oh, yeah, it does it. Duration lasts a minute, so you can, yeah. So yeah, I can yeah, just... Okay. And yeah. I'm not going to use acid. I'm going to use my... Uh, chromatic one control. Of my chromatic control to augment it to fire. I mean, yeah. And, and feet I just want to check the wording, because you said... Lucius can't like you are doing this. This isn't a I want to do it, is Lucius is doing it. I think he Lucius said what is... if at the start of it. Okay. But, sure. Because well, sometimes with Chris Trot it's a I'm, I'm doing I'm... it. Because <laughs> that's doing the it. thing. Yeah. I know Chris Trot is a lever puller, so um first level. Yeah, just it's just first level the effect. Floor, right? And okay. once I get thirty feet in, I'm gonna do it again. Interesting. So it's like it covers them in acid. So I guess you're actually kind of making like a beam of napalm, really. It's like a kind of like it sticks to the briars and then it burns. 2d4 acid at the start of its turn. You're doing it as fire. So, it's so I'm using damage. my one hand, my non gauntleted hand to cast this. And then I'm using my gauntlet to augment it as we go. And there's fire That's at cool. the end. As F. So 
I'm just going to try in and a see. minute. Yeah, like yeah, in 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 <laughs> sort of, I would say it would probably take six. You'd be doing on average. Let's do average damages rather than rolling every time. So it'd be forty-four. It's going to be two and a half, five, ten, ten points of damage. Um, sort of every round. Yeah, you would burn 10. through every every two rounds. You burn through. Um, every two rounds, you burn through ten feet. In a minute, you can do... A minute is uh, 10 rounds, so you can get through... So, okay, so it gets you half of the wall. You can carve, like, enough of space for people to travel through about halfway through. Um, just because, like, the napalm doesn't, like, burn as intensely um, as, like, it feet, takes right? a yeah. while. Well. Yeah, so, like, 30 feet. Um, but, like, it, I'm assuming that, like, once you've carved 30 feet, you then step forward We're and We're going to go like, in, and I'll further. do it again, yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, um, you well, how is the first spell slot? How's the ed like the singed edges of these briars reacting? Because, well, because it isn't so so. If this was like an actual fire spell, most fire spells say it ignites stuff. Um, because this is like a kind of like acid turned into fire, like a kind of like napalmy magma kind of material. Once it like it burns really quickly and then it cools and it so it coats it in sort of like this thick resin that's kind of left behind so the fire doesn't spread this is actually like a pretty like a nice side effect right because it doesn't actually ignite anything it doesn't cause like this big inferno of fire now it probably is still going to be quite bright there is still a chance that somebody will see you doing this but it's much less than if it was like fireball 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 like like it's it's a lot less than that so yeah i'd say that like yeah like it takes you like two minutes you have to use two first level spell slots to do it but yeah like lucius uses this kind of spray of molten fire uh like liquid gold um to basically carve and melt and and burn through uh this kind of archway of, of space um and it's just about big enough for you guys to move through single file and the the thorny walls are like trying to get you but it can't quite reach you it's kind of like just on the very edges like it seems to be working nice. if you want right. to come on in to my magma chamber your magma chamber how hot is it in there lucius it's it cool down Warm, yeah, but it, it, it does cool quickly, just not at the yeah. front. Don't stand at the front. Yeah, yeah Lucius, okay. you're probably getting quite sweaty because for yeah. you it is quite hot. You're the first. My hair's sticking to my face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very sort of pale and sort of like yeah, waxen. Anyone with um, sharp weapons, be on alert in case there's any briars that manage to poke their way through. You can slice them, and okay. you'll just slowly edge our way forward. It's like, yeah, sure. Uh, cool. Well, if you're doing it that way, uh, let me do a D100 mm -mm. to see if anybody notices. Um, well, I can just do it on D and D Beyond, can I? Uh, so, roll to everybody. Um, very low chance. I would actually say that because of the way you're doing this, it's like a 15% chance that you get spotted. Okay. Um, so I'll roll a D100. Uh, 1, 2, 15 uh, will be a somebody spots it 70 uh so it takes a couple of minutes but lucius you know at the end of it you find that the briar wall collapses uh, and in front of you is the back alley of a yeah very fairy tale disney-esque city um lucius dripping with sweat um but the rest of you found it quite cool none of you were really sort of suffering from the heat um as you kind of single hand you i think that the only people that would struggle would be uh rose meadow and big cat because they're larger creatures but like sentry and nova and the others you guys can kind of like swipe and carve and make sure that any plants like that come towards them don't quite don't quite make it um i'm yeah. gonna use prestidigitation to remove some of the <laughs> <laughs> surface sweat yeah, I mean, just before kind of you even lift your hand ball. to do that, I like gust you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Quill. Which wing was that? It's okay, I'm not telling you. <laughs> you will tell me. Sounds like any time, any time to <laughs> name the <laughs> way. Um, time to come on there. Now that you guys are inside, Nova, uh, Nova, who saw this from above, it kind of matches up to what you were thinking. You're on the very edges of the the small city, um, having just kind of got through the briar wall. The rest of you very quickly notice that whilst when you first look around, yeah, it looks like this kind of like Disneyland fairy tale, you know, Sleeping Beauty esque town. It very quickly becomes apparent that it is not necessarily neglected, but there is wear and tear. 
a significant amount of it. The pastel roof tiles, a number of them are broken and haven't been replaced. The flower boxes beneath windows are actually quite overgrown and haven't been taken care of. Um, there's little bits of like refuse. The the cobblestone streets are some many of them are broken and haven't been replaced. Um, still pretty, but in this kind of like it's been sort of neglected like people aren't keeping on top of it anymore kind of thing um you do hear sort of murmurings um you can hear like mutterings and murmurings and i think you maybe see uh, a very you see a goblin you see a goblin's face pressed up against the window looking at you and looking at the whole of like now sort of like resin encrusted briar wall and they they look terrified they're like <gasps> Oh. Kill him! <laughs> I don't know that. Uh, I'm just going to put my hands up, I guess, and be like, "It's okay." Uh, the, the goblin turns, and you imagine that they they look quite young. Um, and you hear in, in I don't know if any of you speak goblin, but like in in goblin says something, um, and. Uh, like sort of like does this motion and then an older looking male and uh male and female <laughs> goblin both stick their heads in the window and like oh they look terrified and then they kind of clutch the young goblin and they drag them away and then oh yes they don't appear again. regular maintenance is underway <laughs> we shall be repairing this section of the the wall very shortly nothing will get through <laughs> Uh, you can probably oh, see Rose Meadows trying to like druid craft some of the wall back together. Like, you notice know, <laughs> the floor <laughs> there. <laughs> yes. It's like plant growth a little bit as well. Just like, <laughs> like help if you out. want to cast plant growth sentry, your third level spell, <laughs> you go for it. You tell me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay. Why not? Why uh, not? Very quickly, like Sentry sort of like you kind of feel the energy of the Matrix go into the land, and that hole that Lucius created is just <laughs> the briars just regrow instantly, and it's just like and Rosemary is like, I did it. Uh, we should uh, remember this location for when we want to make our escape. Oh, <laughs> okay. It's yeah, fine. That might have been useful. It's thicker than before. <laughs> yeah, it's, pretty, it's pretty thick. Uh, it's even worse. Coffee. It's pretty thick. Um, well, let's hope these goblins don't report us to anybody. Um, oh, I imagine that they will not, my lord. Uh, the people here are somewhat cowed. These false knights have been causing all sorts of trouble. Most people try and stay in their homes, work on their projects. They don't tend to leave unless they need to. Mm. All right. Well, let's make our way, shall we? sure uh so is the plan what so is the plan now to like sneak to the palace or are you just gonna go marching into the streets and find a bunch of guards and be like we are here to see mesmera i mean if we're in the back alleys right now it makes mm -hmm. sense to stick to it like we got this far without being spotted at all we may as well try and avoid where we can i think until yeah. we literally can't hide anymore <laughs> sure okay I th um personally i don't want everyone else feels yeah, it's gonna be it's it's gonna be more. It's a case of like we definitely want to see some stealth checks, but also like this is a fairly unfamiliar city. Nova's got a good idea of sort of like some of it. You know, can remember a little bit of like oh, actually, I think it's maybe to the you know, and you can see the tower. So navigating it isn't too tricky. But this is unfamiliar territory, and there is a chance that you might bump into people and stuff like that. Um, um, so well, I I'd, I'd want to use um, if I can arcane mm -hmm. eye. Uh, to follow ahead of us, not go into the middle of the road. Like if if things here have true sight and they most things seem like they do, uh, then I don't want to just fly this thing around because they'll see it. Uh, yeah. But I want to have it like hover ahead of us so we can like sure. down that way invisibly. -ish. Okay. Yeah, you can do that because you're still trying to keep the hidden eye. Um, the the arcane eye hidden in case anything has true sight. It's kind of it will give you. Like, a, like, not advantage, but, like, I will definitely... It will help. Um, but you're still going to need to do things like stealth checks. And, you know, if there's yeah, yeah. any other skills you guys want to use, um, I think that that would... You know, if there's, like, oh, I, maybe I could try and use this to do this kind of thing. Um, try and avoid attention. Or any spells you want to cast or anything um, like that. I will probably... I, I know there's probably the risk of true sight, but just for 
regular plebs. Um, I can cast, and I will cast invisible on four people. Um, okay. And then I have my Shroud of Shadows, That's which half. mean I can go invisible at will. That's half the group. Um, so, okay. Yeah. I'd give sure. that to um, perhaps Big Cat, Rose Meadow, Sentry. the more Dahlia. larger people that could be easily spotted. Yeah, because don't forget, invisibility doesn't mean that you can't be detected. Like, noise, scent, yeah. all of this stuff. Like, you know, yeah. Sentry can knock things over. Also, like, when you make somebody invisible, it's like... There, it's not one ring invisibility. It's kind of like there's still like a slight haze, like almost like an oasis haze. Um, mm -hmm. So, but it, it especially for like big cat, rose meadow, sentry, the bigger individuals being invisible will help massively with uh, avoiding yeah. detection. Cool. All right. So, um, so, I think I'd probably cast it on big cat, rose meadow, Thalia, and sentry. Okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah, Thali is um definitely sort of like nursing her arm and like <clears throat> you could she can't help coughing, like she's like <clears throat> she's like desperately trying to like not cough, but every now and then she is like hacking up blood and stuff like that. Um yeah. uh, or like wincing and sort of like, you know, struggling in pain a little bit. Um Okay. Just so every you, time, you Yeah. Just every on. time she does that, Nova like just gets this wash of like being super super worried and she's trying to keep it off her face but it goes on her face and then and like she looks really but then she just tries to be really cheery and happy and like hey yeah. you've got this it's okay you've got this and positive and then she turns around and is just like <laughs> like you know yeah. silent screaming yeah. and yeah it's uh, motion <laughs> cool. so with half there. the group currently invisible uh the remaining half um you know are you making your way out into the uh the, the into the streets. It's going to be a stealth check from everybody, uh, if you want to start making your way. Uh, yes. Cool. cool, cool, cool. Uh, stealth. What is my stealth skill again? Oh, God, plus two. Same. Uh, 16. Uh, do I get advantage for oh. being invisible? No. For the purposes of this, I've done it I've done it as a different uh, benefit. Um, this is... Got natural one. A... Nice. Which is a four in total. So, that's... uh, nice. I actually pulled that out the bag with a friggin' twenty. Hell yeah! Cool. Not natural, so, but you know. All right, so twenty for Quill. Um, so I'm just doing this in my head. So I had two, two. Um, so okay, so that was Quill got a twenty. Lucius, ten. Ayla, sixteen, and I had advantage as well because of my boots. Sixteen. Um, Nova? Four. Four? Sent we. I have disadvantage and I rolled a four. Okay, nice. Uh, so. You are making your way through. Um, those of you who are invisible, kind of staying out of sight, the arcane eye up ahead. Oh, I'm fine. I will give you another lose for the arcane eye. Um, yeah, the arcane eye kind of helping you uh, just keep uh, a thing. The the only problem with sticking to these alleyways, like as you're kind of trying to sneak your way around, which you do, you you've managed to do so far. You don't think you've drawn any attention. Um, occasionally, uh, somebody like Sentry, despite being invisible, will like stop and like lean against the house, and it just makes like a louder thump than you were expecting. And like a, like a little pixie or a gnome like sticks their head up in the window, like looks around, maybe sees like those of you who aren't invisible, so like, you know, probably sees like uh, Lucius or whatever, um, sort of like raises an eyebrow and things like that. Um, but no attention from anybody you think would bring you any sort of like danger so far. The only problem is, is all these little nooks and alleyways aren't going to get you closer to the spy. You quickly realize that the alleyways of the smaller buildings tend to be in a sort of circular loop. Um, and then the kind of open public parks, public marketplaces, the big open roads that lead in and out of the city, they are the main ways that you have to use to get to the central area. Um, you also begin to notice now that there are those winged elves, uh, the insectoid, like the grasshopper mantis elves, are flying around and you can see that there's a good couple of patrols of them like two or three patrols of them kind of all over different parts of the city but they they are buzzing overhead currently not like they know you're there but they are 
active in the area. Um, you can also begin to hear the sounds of like more people out on the streets. Um, you can just hear people going about normal business. You can hear people sort of trading goods. You can hear people discussing uh, projects that they're working on, like paintings or poems and things like that. Um, but it's quite muted. The conversation does not seem very lively. It seems quite sort of not dour, but also not very happy. Um, very muted. Uh, what's the next plan? What's the next plan? Like you, you know, you, you, you've, you know, tried to be yours, being as stealthy as you possibly can be. Uh, is there anything else that you want to try and do to kind of make your way into the the center of this this place? I don't think Lucius has any um, tricks up his sleeve at the moment. No. Is there anywhere closer to the spire that Nova could perhaps see to do the old arcane gate? Uh, it, you certainly can, yeah. I mean, it, it could potentially help, yeah. Yeah, being able to get closer. Um, obviously, you know, that, that would get you 500 feet closer. It's not going to get you immediately next to the spire. Like, this is... That will probably help you considerably, like, get closer to it, but it's not going to get you all the way. Um, it's going to take some time. Um, also, you know, keep in mind things like, Lucius, it could be that you were... Maybe, like, there are some locals around, like, and... You, you could try and ask for like oh do you know like a quiet way like you know you, you could try and speak to them and be like we're trying to get to the the palace we don't want the guards to find us like could you help us like you you could try i guess and they are I've, it's noticeable that they're in fear of them so there's, yeah i mean i'm not yeah there's definitely an element of that or at least there is an uh, an element of trepidation um or like you could try and you know bluff it you could try and be like oh yes we're, we're looking for our friend who's in a very heavily wooded park that <laughs> where people from the sky couldn't see us like you could try and like you know do stuff like that basically this is me saying like look at your skills and if you think of like oh there's this i could use this skill to do a cool thing or like i want to do this cool thing that isn't a skill what would that be like could i make could i do this etc etc et um yeah i think lucius would try and use his deception uh in a very empathetic way and just appeal to people shivering and contained in their houses. Just knock on a yeah. window. Yeah, you could like, yeah, you could knock on one of the windows because you, you you can tell that there are people out on sort of like these marketplaces and streets. But if you want to go to like an actual like building where you've you've heard people inside and be like, actually, that's a better option. Yeah, you can kind of go up. Maybe like um, you did see like a building where a little gnome in a sort of very traditional garden gnome red cap was like looking out, uh, and you could go and knock on his door if you wanted to. Yep, I'll knock on that. Sure. Just give me a deception check. Rather than role playing out the whole thing, just give me a deception check. Um, see if you can pass it off. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. Yeah. Um, yeah. You mentioned that this this little gnome kind of answers his He's like, "Hello. Oh, I've never. Are you new here?" And then you kind of have like a back and forth of like, "Oh yes." Uh, um, and he's just like, "Oh well. If if you, I would recommend you keep off the streets. Don't don't let the knights see you. You look new. You don't look like you're from here. Quite I, I scary. Avoid it. Yes. Mm. Yeah. We, no, yeah. Some when they're in a terrible mood. Uh, just last week they came by and and they took old sweet Nelly from down the road and. We've not seen her since. Uh, this, it keeps happening more and more. I, I don't know what Lady Miss Mare is doing, but something, well, something's afoot. We've heard so many positive and wondrous tales of Miss Mare and her generosity and and oh, some, beauty and tranquility, and we were some, hoping to sometimes, come... Sometimes sometimes she can be that way, yes, but there are other times, and these these knights that she sends out, they're not they're not like that at all. Or oh, they're mean and cruel, and, and they're, they're frightful, frightful folk. Right. Well, if we make our way to the castle, I'll ask about Nelly on your behalf. Oh yes, please, please do. Yes, she was supposed to. They, they took her for work, and and uh, they were they were they, they they did not ask kindly. But um, yes, if you if you head down this way, I think that there's an old there's an old park. It's not very used much very more. Um, old Fangles Fanglewood Park. It's just down there. And if you if you head through that, the the, the knights don't go in there. Um, Fanglewood you, Park. You, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. You're more than welcome. More than welcome, my boy. Much obliged. Uh, that waves you off. Yeah. Uh, so that's that's gonna be that's gonna be an aid. That's gonna be a help. Um, Good old Fanglewood. Fang Fanglewood Park. Yeah, it's a very famous location. Uh, definitely written in my <laughs> well notes. Known. Very famous. <laughs> well loved. Yeah. Um, I need so to yeah, go and in the Rowers book. Any other cool mm -hmm. ideas? That all that, that happens. Like you go to Fanglewood Park, and it does help you avoid some guards and things like that. Um, still, still ways off though. 
Lucius, the uh, person you were speaking to, mm. um, did they mention where these civilians are getting taken? Not particularly. They're just taken away. They taken mentioned. for work, I think, is he said. It's the way yes. that he phrased Some it. Sort of so labour. Taken for work. Mm -hmm. So if you notice anyone <laughs> working at their behest en route, it could well be where they're putting them. Okay. Uh, Quill, do you have some ability, or Lucius, um, to, to, to see true sight? I do, yeah. Especially with your... Um, is it is it costly? Is it... I just... I wonder if there's invisible things around here. Or uh, Amador... Amador? Amad the dandelion. Uh -huh. The the yeah. fever dream dandelion. Oh, he's still here. He's still oh, here. I love you, um, yes. Right. Amador, you mentioned something about the false knights being an illusion? Um, well, I could feel their elven hands did not feel like soft, delicate elven flesh. They felt hard and cold, like a pincer or a claw. I suspect illusions at play. Quill, I was just wondering if you can see any of the elves with, with true sight, if you could perhaps reveal what uh, they I mean. Like. I can reveal their altered image for sure, but it won't uh, help us spot them outside of seeing them as they are now. Um, so it won't, we won't gain any progress, but I can certainly try and discover what they actually are. I think that's the thing. It troubles me. If we know what they are, then maybe if we've met them before, we, we could know like how they hunt, how they track. I'd say okay. that might help. That would that would certainly be. I, yeah. I <laughs> he doesn't want to spend that spells. <laughs> He's like, I, not, I, think it's, it's, I think it's this an eight level. This is Kim level. speaking. It's oh shit! It's, 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 it's a big old. Oh, if, oh it's a big. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, never mind. Oh, sixth level. True sight's good. It's, no, yeah. I mean, oh, six. I'm okay with six. Yeah, I thought it was higher. I thought it was much higher. Yeah, I thought it was higher. Uh cool. Are you going to cast true seeing? It's up to you, Tom. Like, yeah, yeah. Um, do you know? Yes. Uh, does does so? I've also got the arcane eye. Um, uh -huh. True sight is not concentration. Not that that matters much for me anyway. Uh -huh. Can I see true sight <laughs> through the arcane eye? Oh, that's a good. You know what, Thomas? That's a bloody good question, isn't it? So, it is. Arcane has eye. Crawford written about that one. He hasn't. <laughs> uh, you create an invisible magical eye within range that hovers for duration. You mentally receive visual information from the eye, which has normal vision and dark vision. I'm oh. afraid, Thomas, I'm going to say no. That wording to me implies yeah. that the eye has its own methods of seeing, and when you look through it, you see it through its method. Um, that makes sense. Oh, that true so seeing cool. would only apply to your own natural vision. Okay, fair enough. Uh, that's fine. I mean... It can I see these? I'll tell you what, elves, though. When you get back to Erois, if you want to spend some time when you're back in Horizon to develop a, mm. a means to like make Arcane Eye better, so that you can true see Arcane through Eye. It. Like, well, maybe not a whole new spell, but like maybe <laughs> if you spend like you know a hundred gold each time you cast it, you can use a special incense that enables you to use like true seeing and stuff through it. Yeah, that's. I want cool. true Arcane Eye. True sure. Arcane Eye and cool as uh, Make sure you mark off, uh, for if you're casting True Seeing Tom, it requires an ointment for the eyes that costs 25 gold pieces made from mushroom, mushroom powder, saffron, and fat. Um, Pretty sure we uh, lost it in a uh, while already. Yeah, it's fat. You can just, just, just <laughs> oh, wait, mark no, off. In my, no, I did mark off. I have actually pre-bought these, uh, and I did mark it off in advance. I have one times True Sight in my inventory. There we go. Uh, oh, I love true it. Wow. That's Who awesome. is this guy? I, love I did it. last time we were at a shop. I did uh, sneak out some gold for some general oh. ingredients. Tom, if I used inspiration, I'd give you inspiration, but I don't. I'll take it now. <laughs> I've marked it. I have it. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, so you cast true sight, true seeing. Uh, I do. And what do you want to do with it once you have it? Go like uh, find a spot where you can like get get visual info on some of these guards. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, obviously, I'll cast this with the prerequisite that I can see these elves uh, flying around. Right, yeah. Uh, well, there's, you have a choice. You could either go and try and, like, find some of the flying ones, but there's, they did, they, you can hear that there are maybe, like, ones walking around in the streets and stuff as well. Like, oh, okay. you can either go for the yeah. flying ones or you can go for ones in the streets. I'll uh, sneak a peek at the ones close up, I suppose. Although I have okay. telescopic quill vision. You do? 2,000% 2, 
extra you, vision. I mean, you could look at both. Technically, the spell lasts yeah. an hour. You can just look at both. It lasts an hour. Um, I'll, I'll look at well, whatever I can, whatever can identify see. first. Oh, and also, I, I, I also want to look at uh, or get a look with True Sight at the spire and the wall and, and various yeah. other things in this time. Well, I, I can tell you that one. That one's an easy one to answer. Um, the spire and stuff doesn't change. Um, there is clearly magic, like, you know, looking around, like, yeah, there's fucking magic everywhere. This place is infused with it. But the spire itself, the walls, the buildings around you, none of that is, there's no illusions or anything on that. Okay. When you look at the guards, though, oh boy. You immediately see that they are covered in illusion magic. Uh, they are obscured by quite a powerful illusion magic. Um, quite powerful way more powerful than actually the the creature that cast this must be pretty damn strong you recognize some of these creatures you have seen them once before uh it was a while ago uh on another plane uh on a plane called azagrat and you see red-skinned <laughs> men and women in armor with horns and tails um you see creatures like almost like a centaur but the top half rather than a humanoid is like a demon like made of rock and molten flesh um you see these creatures made of they almost look like they're made from bones and they're completely white with long pole arms um and you see through the illusion you can see that all of them have been disguised as like centaurs or elven knights or as sort of like treant like creatures like tree guardians and they've all been disguised as fey beings they are 100 percent devils and demons um and fiends. can i we Can didn't I... see that coming at all. <laughs> after after looking at the the guards, can I have another look at Thalia now that I can see her invisibly, and yeah, at the curse again because <laughs> yeah. I remember something yeah. a little while back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's still there. Um, you can see, and it's it's almost changed where like before she had this six fingered black hand. Um, it looks like the, the the image of it shifted, so it looks like it's gripping even tighter. Like, it's actually, like, you can see, like, it's pressing into the skin, like it's gripping quite painfully onto her arm. Um, so I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it, I might have at one point, because I had that true sight, and I saw, like, mm. I saw Rose Meadow, and I saw, um, like, mm -hmm. Tiangong properly, and, all of, and the spiders as well. I'm pretty mm -hmm. sure after the fact, I was, like, I communicate the rest of that stuff with everyone else as well. And like the six fingered grip, I remember you mentioning. Mm -hmm. so I'm pretty sure I told it everyone else. Clear. Correct me if I'm wrong. It wasn't. You you very no, much you latched onto the spiders it. and you didn't yeah. tell us about you didn't the, tell the rest fingers. of the group. So, real I mean, life us knows what it is, but in character, yeah. I, feel like, I, don't have I feel like if I use true sight and I was overwhelmed with in the information of the magical was, truth of everything around me and also fucking spiders everywhere i would yeah. be looking at the spiders <laughs> everywhere um so yeah i so i mean what what actual creatures are these again they are just demons <clears throat> there's a bunch of them you recognize the ones flying around um i don't know if quill would maybe you would kind of know what these are make a um just make a religion check for me quill let's see, see if you actually know what kinds of fiends uh specifically oh, this is not as high as I thought it would be. Plus two. 18. Why would you be trained in religion? You vaguely remember, <laughs> you do vaguely remember some stuff that you've read and like when you want as a garat. The creatures flying around, um, you are pretty sure are Iranis. They're sort of like warrior demons, like a uh, female sort of warrior devils. Um, devils specifically. Um, you one of the ones on the ground, this kind of creature made of like white bone. Um, it's called a bone devil. Um, the the centaur like demons you're not sure you don't I don't think you've met seen and encountered them much before I think maybe you saw one on Azagrat but you don't know what it's called um, okay yeah bone lord yeah you call them what you want I would have called it a bone lord um, but yeah they are <laughs> they are all hidden under pretty powerful illusion um, and yeah they are they are replacing all of the all of the creatures here the ones who are on the ground by the way when you sort of peer around an alleyway and you're trying to track these guards that are moving through the streets they are going door to door 
Um, and you basically hear the knights, like you kind of witness them in their true form, but you can see it, still see their illusions hovering over them. They bang on a door, um, and, uh, you know, these nervous looking, let's say, uh, like satyrs open, uh, and one of them just says like, her ladyship and it speaks like the rest of you hear this beautiful like elven like the ladyship very melodic voice quill it also affects like the hearing you hear it's like actual speech true hearing. It's, like true hearing uh the lady requests new servants for the palace <laughs> we're looking for volunteers and you see the satyrs just absolutely hope drains out their face they are just aghast with like horror um and sort of uh, a young sort of young male looking satyr like uh kind of like pulls probably what you assume is his parents back and he's just like yeah i'll, I'll go i'll go and they're like good would have hate for this to turn ugly uh and they sort of put an arm on them and and you can see like they're causing him pain like they're like gripping into him and they drag him out of the house basically um and then they start marching him uh, off down the street I mean, seeing them with true sight, I will oh, slink back to everyone else. Hey, guys, come here, come here, come here quick, 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 what? quick, quick. What's the matter? They're, they're all demons, Azagrat style demons. As what? Grats, what? Demons, like demonic Excuse me? possession demons. The knights. How could Mes yes, the knights. How would Mesmera possibly have made a pact with something, well, from a completely different plane for starters, but also with someone who really hates us? I don't say BT dubs. By the way. <laughs> That's convenient. I really hope that that guy would stay in space where we left him, because he really, really hates us. What's more, Thalia is like, Thalia looks servants. utterly like, what? Like, she's like, like clutching her arm. She's like, no, that that's not possible. It can't be. Why go through I mean, that ridiculous was... charade of the game with us? Why, why do that? If he was... He, what? No, it can't, it can't be. I mean, maybe just to give you some hope for the wishes. Left. Uh, with that, it's break time. <laughs> so, oh. it's no, break I time. Walk I mean, we there. don't have to take a break. We can keep playing. I'm happy to keep playing. But I think now is a good time <laughs> because they yeah, all want so. a break. Like, like, they just said that they are looking for volunteers. And I feel like it would be a good idea to just be like, hey. Oh. Take us. Hey, he, <laughs> we want to be. I feel like they'll yeah. know who we are instantly if they're with Grats. Yeah. They'll be they like, won't. ah, these well, ones. They know. Well. That's something they you guys can have a think about and have a chat about. Why don't we take a quick? I volunteer as tribute. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> we'll be like, oh, good. One of the take ones we were looking for. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah. Sure. Most wanted Joe. on Azagrat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's there's the there's the wild elf that shouted at him. He'll yeah, want that yeah, one. Yeah. Oh, These and all losers who if, really if pissed off Prince Gratz. There's, uh, there's two people that are technically, you know, uh, lost a game against two him and people, owe, yeah. this, owe their yep. souls. Uh, three people. Oh, yeah. Well, well, three, three. Uh, yeah, That's yeah, the thing. Thalia. There's three people, yeah. yeah. Thalia, mm. Lucius, and, uh, and Kilek. Uh, Old Kilek well, Ad Kalar. Leave you on that one. Oh, he, has um, he has true sight too. He has true sight too. He has true sight too. I remember he had true sight too. Because he cheated. Cheated at the stupid game. Yeah, Cheated at the stupid game and broke our stupid game. Mm. Why didn't I have true sight then? Oh my god, if I did. <laughs> you weren't <laughs> happy enough. He was oh. actually he was close to being I think he was I think he did have six level spells. Maybe he was a little bit off, but scroll. Maybe. Maybe. Imagine. Maybe, 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 Imagine. maybe, maybe. Anyway, break time. Bastard. We'll be back. <laughs> <sighs> Tom is. Are you actually surprised by this? Like, I feel like this is the worst secret. Like, no, I'm no, not, we're surprised not surprised by it. By it. Am, we're just yeah, like, I am, however, excited. Annoyed. By it. <laughs> right, okay. we're thinking yeah, about no, the no, consequences now. I'm scared. Mm. I'm yeah. scared. Yes, you, should be. you should be scared. No, well, but no, we're not surprised at all. No, I didn't think you were. I've shit. I'm that scared. Uh, <laughs> um, hello, welcome the donation corner that's what i'm calling it now i'm not i'm going to forget next week um well i'm going to read some of your donations but first i want to again remind you of our wonderful patreon where you can support us and receive regular updates they are actually regular i'm surprised i'm keeping up with that um regular studio updates for the high roller studio so if you want to see how that's going come check it out um you don't have to support us 
with a huge amount. I don't even think there's a minimum, to be honest. Uh, so if you want to support us on there and see the studio updates as they come up, have a look, please. It'll be amazing. Um, but as for donations for today, we had one just before the stream started from Anonymous. It was a quarter hundo. And they say, queefs aggressively in dandelion. Thanks. Uh, being Wolfie also donated okay. with, with uh, 30 dollar dues. Uh, and they say, happy birthday, High Rollers. I hope uh, High Rollers continues to strive and thrive. Crazy to see how far it's come, but everything that comes from this channel is a blast to consume. Here's to more adventures. Thank you very much. Um, being Wolfie, thank you very much. Nightjar also donated with happy sixth birthday, you nerds. Love you all very much. I'm so unbelievably proud of everything you've all accomplished in the past few D&D filled years. Here's to many more. Also. Happy belated 84 birth. Wait, happy belated 84 birthday, Tom. Thank you, Nightjar. Um, Viking Fungus, happy sixth birthday, High Rollers. Thanks for uh, all the laughs, tears, sweat, blood, consequences, jokes, ad campaigns, daddies, epic role playing, questionable facts about the Jetsons, Chaos Twins, <laughs> one shots, I'm a delight, voice effects, clownings, and wahoos. Thank you, Viking Fungus. What a wonderful <laughs> compression of the last six years in that donation. Uh, Patch with 666. Um, this seemed the only appropriate number to donate for six years of High Rollers for six times six more years of you lovely people. Um, side note, this would be for the Tom NFT, the only worthwhile NFT. No, there isn't one. There isn't a worthwhile one. There Anime is. Kami um, has donated with Tom is 50? God, I remember him in Lightfall. He was a lot younger. I was. Uh, it's been a long time. Uh, Graying Badger with a half hundo. Uh, happy birthday, Tom, and all the high rollers from beyond the grave, uh, because they are 37 years old and basically dead, like I said. Uh, so thank you, Graying Badger. Um, Oracle, uh, 143 with a half hundo. I love you all. Happy birthday, Tom. You guys got me into D&D. I am now DMing my own group. I'm excited to be a Patreon member. I just got my High Rollers hoodie in the mail and love it. I'm having a blast with the legendary bundle using your link from D&D Beyond. Thank you, hey. thank you. Every, every sentence had an exclamation mark at the end, uh, so I thought I'd read it that way. Thank you very much. Um, Omega Thief uh, finally caught up with Aroas, so I can watch live this week. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Asteria Oracles. Congrats on six years. After a long break from DMing due to burnout, I'm going to return to it. It's thanks to the inspiration of High Rollers, Erois, and Mark has given me. Uh, can't wait to share the enthusiasm you guys gave me with my players. Thank you so much. Amazing. Nice. Oracles. Uh, best of luck with that. Thank you very much. Um, the Dragon King 89, I nominate Lucius as next Archfey. We kind of want to keep him with us. Also, I really don't want to see like the emotion-led kingdom that he would control. Oh, good God. Um, Bay Feather has donated with what the hell? Thanks. Uh, <laughs> just, just what the hell? Um, and Mark's what Left the Nut, the very generous Mark's Left Nut, is back Hello? once again uh, with a quarter hundo. Uh, I give it another episode before Nova war crimes the entire city. I think it might happen this, this episode, to be honest. Um, also, 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 before the stream began and throughout the stream, MK13 Wolf gifted 51 subaroos. Uh, I am a robot 012C with another 50 gifted subs. Holy crap. Crispy 1260 gifted 11 subs. The Jam Mac uh, with 10. The Islands with 5. Being Wolfy with 6. Grandmaster or Grindmaster DJ with 5. Captain Payne with 5. Keir Grizzly with 5. Wandering Heron. A liver of three, two twisted, two care, and Gasardvark, all gifting subs. Thanks. The hell. So if you got a gifted subs, a gifted sub from that uh, that AK forty seven bullet fire of gifted subs, then uh, and enjoy uh, and use your emotes wisely, uh, especially the Daddy Dun Suck one. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Go get your coffee. Um, I'm gonna go get myself a coffee. Coffee. Oh. Wait, it's back. Clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> you can just leave the chair there and uh, yeah. 
we'll just you know talk. Could do. Try it's probably but the, like, the longer you take, the longer we have to wait to get back in game. So go get your that's coffee. True. You can't just put Ellie there. <laughs> A Bolero. There we go. Oh, gonna, he can. Gonna leave. Gonna leave. <laughs> oh, he can. Look at the kitty. Hello, kitty. He's already looking. He's like, I don't know. Yay, if I'm stay Bolero there. cam. He... I also have Angus. Trot, we, 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 the reason, the reason that it's great. still on Tom's cam is Trot is not back. Yeah. <laughs> um, break time is when Angus is sleepy boy. And yeah. he wanders in when I open the door, so he gets a cuddle. The rare time when Angus isn't tearing things up, trying to destroy everything. Tries to jump on top of the TV. That's the main issue currently. Mm. Uh, welcome to the Chair Cat Podcast. Uh, it's just a, a you know twenty four hour stream of cats on chairs. People talk over the top of it. But hey, listen, I'll tell you what is still on on screen though. What's that? What's that down in the little corner? D and D Beyond. Why oh, they're sponsoring this episode of High Rollers? What? Yeah. Excuse me. D and D Beyond, you guys know, right? You guys know D and D Beyond, don't you? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. <laughs> what about you, Kim? You you, you know about D and D Beyond, though, don't you, Kim? Everyone oh, yes. does. I can cool about D and D Beyond. Beyond. Right. I've heard of it. Yes, I was the ones yes. with the fuzzy dice, right? <laughs> they're the one, That's right, Rihanna. Mm. They're the ones with the fuzzy yeah. dice for subscribers. But you don't mm. just get fuzzy and... dice, you know. You don't just get fuzzy dice. You get yeah, access true. to the world's yeah. best character builder for 5e, best encounters feature, which includes a combat tracker and an encounter builder in one. Oh. <laughs> and all the latest books. All oh. of them. Easy to search oh. through compared to a physical book. <laughs> oh, oh, look up True Seeing. Was that a player just asked me? If I had to get a book, I'd be like flipping through, finding True Seeing. True Seeing. Bam. Straight away. Got it. Check you've got like monster stats and like what's that <laughs> spell just hover over it or click just it click. and it will tell you <laughs> it's done <laughs> things it's done <laughs> oh, <that's true. laughs> i can't believe it <laughs> i know <laughs> amazing <laughs> the problem is i grew up in a place where people did speak like that so <laughs> that's, a, that's why it's so much in my vanilla what no <laughs> sharon you want me <laughs> Nice. Nah. Uh, oh, look at this boy. He's got a little Fanta. I thought you were getting a coffee. I oh, you get a coffee. I got a Fanta. <laughs> little Fanta. Nice. Yeah, do. Welcome back. Thanks for sponsoring, uh, everybody. I didn't. We're going to continue on with our D&D adventure. The party having, uh, yeah, just found, well, not just found out. They've known this for a while. Their characters have just realized uh, that this <laughs> uh, city is full of disguised devils and demons and fiends. No. Uh, and some connections are being made. Some like, oh, could this person, could, could this big evil villain that we sort of just left months ago uh, be possibly involved? Maybe. Um. Maybe not. Months ago, uh, mm. so yeah, no, sorry, no. In real time, in yeah, real, real in real time, time yeah, it yeah. was uh, July twenty twenty. Yeah. yeah, July yeah. twenty twenty. So Literally. over a year, well over a year. Ten thousand oh years ago, <laughs> year and a half ago, <laughs> crazy. In game, a few months. The um, beginning of lockdown, in fact. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, I feel like we were a few yeah. months in at that point. No, yeah, because we I, I well, just... actually, yeah, we went to space yeah. at the start of lockdown. Yeah. It's like it'll be temporary. Yeah, yeah. 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 you yeah. did a bunch of stuff with um, Thalia and like her contacts and stuff like that before you went to Azengar, and then you went to Azengar. Yes. Yeah, uh, but yeah. So also, the guards were asking for volunteers to work in Das Palis. Did they say Das Palis? Uh, I believe these. I can't remember what I said, but yes, the idea is that yes, they need. Uh, they said that they. Yeah, in fact, they said that they need more workers for the palace. Cool. That that doesn't sound suspicious at all. Doesn't sound like. Quill, what ominous. does that look? What does that look? I, they were they were asking for volunteers to work in the palace. We're trying to get into the palace, and and any any volunteering slots that we can fill means that. The innocent people out there aren't being subjected to whatever pain they will face in there. I, I, I think we could be saving however many people in the city if we go, and we need to go there anyway. It does mean 
will be known by the guards, or they'll know we're in the city, obviously, because they're taking us there. But it's an approach. We should at least tail this poor volunteer and see where they go, because if they end up just working in the grounds, but not necessarily in the castle itself, they could be elsewhere. I doubt they put them anywhere near Mesmera. I think no, we need to but... continue with our plan. Let's tail this one and towards the castle, because we're heading there anyway. We'll keep out of sight okay. for now. Okay. Uh, question. Yes. Um, I love questions. I can't... The during the Sundering, was it Zarkira who was responsible for the demons? Um, so it's it's mm, it's not necessarily Zarkira is responsible. Uh, the Valkyrian Empire has like a co has like a coalition with demonic mm. forces. Like fiends, devils, demons serve the Valkyrian Empire because yeah. you've seen on the Tassadar you encounter like devils and stuff in working alongside them. Um, Azagrat was uh, uh, a different planet. It's the only planet you guys have been to where the demons have been in control of it. And it's kind of like, not independent, but they're kind of left to do things by themselves. Like, Valkyrian doesn't really get too involved with them. Um, but yeah, in terms of the actual invasion and stuff like that, like, Zarkira probably worked with a lot of devils and demons. Like, her forces probably contain quite a lot of them. Um, but they could be found all over like they were they're one of like um i think that like and, and century would know this because this is much more military stuff um devils and demons tend to be Kaos's shock troops like they're the ones he l unleashes first they sow chaos and then his more yeah. trained disciplined troopers come in to kind of mop things up and sort of like secure you know positions and secure objectives and things like that the demons are kind of like he just lets them like loose and then they just okay. <sighs> destroy stuff and then he has to rein them back in, basically. Um, so it could be, it, I mean, devils being here could mean Valkyrian influence. Not, It doesn't necessarily mean uh, Graz. The only thing I think with Graz is because Quill can see the six-fingered hand. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. Yeah. I want to um, say the same thing Lucia said to me. Sentry, what's that look? But I mean, you've got like a blank face plate I'm on at all times face. anyway. <laughs> Fox turning like... blank face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Going through a database. There's more code in the eyes of thinking, and that's how Quill knows. <laughs> like, I know yeah. you're thinking. Um, cool. All right. Well, you guys, um, yeah, I guess if you guys want to follow these these dudes, uh, there is yeah. still a chance you can be detected. So oh, how about... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, we're following whoa. those nerds following those nerds sorry correction um so we've got a few people invisible but as you're kind of beginning to move through like it is a bit more populated here there's you know there's like actual streets where things can go wrong how let's just do another round of stealth checks for everybody like let's see if like now that you've Why kind not? of transitioned into a new environment i think it makes sense to roll new <laughs> stealth check. oh i got oh. that 20. Right, i'll do you guys first Ooh. then i'll do the npcs uh so nova judging by the noise no bueno. So you know how last time I rolled a one? This time, Good. I rolled a two. Ooh, Ooh that's double. double. Double, nice. Mm. All right, so I'll do... Okay, Freddy's on this side. Uh, Lucius. 21. 21. Oh. Ayla, natural 20, so that what that's like... 25. Crazy, right? 25. Will. Uh, 16. 16. Century. 10 with disadvantage. Ten with this one, it's okay. Uh, and let's see, these guys are being led by what's their perception? Pretty bad. Uh, pretty bad. All right. Uh, so that's. Oh, if all of the NPCs fail, uh, this could be bad. But I think you'll be okay. Um, okay. So that's a sixteen for yeah. In fact, I don't think I need to roll for everybody else. Uh, yep. I'm going to anyway because what I we do. 18. Yeah. Oh. So, so uh, uh, 26 for big cat and stuff. Yes. Oh, yeah, big, big cat. Goes, like, full, Where do they go? Like, <laughs> so stealthy. Big cat's also invisible at the moment. So, um, uh, invisibility lasts an hour. It's probably taking you about that, but getting close to the end of that invisibility at this point. Um, yeah, you guys tail these disguised devils, these uh, 
uh, two large centaur-like creatures, like these demon centaurs and this bone devil. Um, you, you follow those guys and you notice that they do a couple more stops. They stop at a few more houses. They get more volunteers um of from these things one of them one of the houses which uh probably has um elven uh, like elves like elandrin elves in it um they try and talk their way out of it they you know they the demons are like we need more workers uh, for the palace and the elandrin's like no no you don't understand my, my brother went last week like we, we've helped we've already provided and at the, the the elf the elf knight or the the bone devil just grabs them throws them on the ground like kicks them in the ribs like like is very viciously brutal um and then just drags like this person off and like the other electric like no please they're like kind of like crying out and screaming at them and stuff like that Damn. Um, but they just um uh and yeah you see like Arm little armador will probably whisper to you just like see they break the rules. They break the arch, uh, Lady Mesmera's rules. They shouldn't be able to do that. That's what we're here to you figure sh- out. You sure, focus- you still want to trail them? We need to help these people. I think that we need to go to wherever Mesmera is, and I don't know where they're leading us. They're doing the rounds, aren't they? They're going around trying we to. Could be wasting our time. All by right, we... doing whatever we're going to do with Mesmera anyway, we could help the entire situation. Let's go this straight to the castle. This could just be running us around. Yes, yeah, let's go. Where do you think it is, Nova, from here? The spire? Mm-hmm. Can we see it from here? Yeah, I mean, you can see it. It's a giant <laughs> yeah. spire. Point. Uh, yeah. point yeah, it's at not, the it's not hard to include you. As well. It's not hard it's to very uh, slowly, just... like as that as that conversation is happening. Like, um, yeah, you guys, uh, I think Sentry, like you and Rose Meadow are watching, and like you're watching like these what you now you now know are devils like dragging these individuals away, um, and they're not heading towards the palace. Like they are they are dragging them somewhere else, and like like that ev- the people that they've gathered this like the the satyr boy, um, this now basically beaten and unconscious elf. They have like a pixie woman, um, and a, probably a gnome, um, and they look terrified. Like they're being marched away. Like like they don't know what's going to happen to them. And like Rose Meadows kind of like. T- like oh, next to you and and she you can see that she has the same look of like she wants to help them like really badly um i think this, don't worry i'm sure Ms. Mera's connected to this in some way like ayla said we'll, okay we'll, we'll talk to Ms. Mera. hopefully things sure. will sort themselves out if not i mean <clears throat> how much does sentry believe that like is sentry saying that to rose meadow to convince rose meadow or is sentry saying that to convince sentry i think <laughs> I think I think Sentry would believe it. I think she has faith that this that the two are connected, and okay. one sure. one will sort out the other. Yeah. Okay, so she does really the, greater, help. the greater evil to hopefully yes. alleviate the lesser evil. Okay, yeah, nice. All right. Hmm. Oh, interesting. Um. Okay. Uh, you guys continue making your way back uh, towards the main spire itself. As you draw closer, uh, the looming buildings around you definitely begin to feel sparser. There's less people around. Uh, you see more of those knights kind of flying in the air. The, the flying knights seem to come and go from the tower, you notice. Uh, they seem to go to the tower. Uh, some, they do something in the tower and then they fly out into the city and seem to be patrolling. Uh, you imagine that they're probably reporting um, to somebody within the tower. Uh, so far undetected. Um, what remains now is uh, you can see up ahead uh, that there is a main road. Uh, there is only one gateway that leads into the actual main spire itself. The main large tall tower is this uh like a scepter almost like it kind of rises up polished white stone with this kind of beautiful kind of blue tiled roof that leads up um there are uh kind of offshoot turrets with sort of pink and green towers um all decorated in spiraling gold with images of flowers and roses and all this kind of stuff it's very picturesque um the 
tower is surrounded by a short wall, like an inner wall, a defensive wall. That's only about sort of 30 feet high, but there is a large uh, metal uh, gate um, in front of it, uh, like that is leads into the tower proper. And then around the outside of that inner wall, um, there is open space with like kind of plazas. And Quill is the first to notice, but looking up ahead, you begin to see figures like stood in front of these gates uh, where there are these two giant statues. There is an elk and a lion sort of perched on top of the gate. Um, huge, huge statues. Um, but there are all sorts of just figures just stood there looking up towards the tower. Uh, this is still in the distance. You're still quite a ways away, but Quill picks this up in Quill Vision. Yeah, I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll point it out to them so everyone can see it, obviously. Should we try and scale the wall away from these statues? Um, if if we want to be undetected and 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 not announce ourselves, I oh, I I actually have a a, a slightly more elegant solution. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I I can create cast a doorway in the wall, so we can get through. Okay. And you don't need to see the other side. No, uh, this is different to Arcane Gate. Amazing. Fantastic. I'm clapping. Already. Uh, this no, no, isn't no, no, some clap, kind of... Shh, 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 Sorry. Shh, 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 it's not like some kind of explosive door, like permanent damage kind of door. Because remember the no. whole no damage to properties rule? Ooh. I don't know if it class... Um, so, so, so it's... Um, um, Tian Tiangong um, has this ability called... Um, uh, what would we call it? Um... There's a wall, and you can pass through it. Uh, pass wall, that's it. Um, but pass it kind of creates... Cr it creates an opening. But it's temporary, so I feel like that's not technically damage, because it appears we go through, it goes. Yeah, it's okay. not like we're, I mean... we're stone skinning and then wall aiding through the, <laughs> through the stone wall. <laughs> What's cool aiding? What's yeah, cool? Is that a know. spell, cool aiding? It must be an old must be like aid, I assume, but a uh, cool yeah. variant. It, or, or it was Kool Aid was also the name of a warrior in the days of Solvin. It was a giant mm, juggernaut yeah. uh, guardian. <laughs> juggernaut. Yeah, Kool Aid. Yeah. It was, but it was Kool Aid. Like, yeah, Century's accent is just extenuating. Kool Aid. Kool Aid. Yeah. Kool Aid. Valiant warrior, very mm. strong. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Just it, it was the breach. It was like sort of main sort yeah. of would burst through defenses. Um, oh, yeah. Are we canonizing oh, yeah. the Kool Aid man? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're saying no, wrong. Kool Aid. Yeah. Kool Aid, Kool -Aid. Kool -Aid. sorry. Kool -Aid. Oh, no, Kool -Aid. Yeah. Great. He was in really like red armor. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. was red armor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big Every time smiley face. Through, always really shouted. Happy. Yeah, loved it. We just <laughs> love shouting. Just, you know, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> Smash through. <laughs> oh, yeah. fantastic. Well,. Could you for smashing through the walls. in in Kool Aid's uh, armor, Nova, do a similar such thing without the the breachy explodey part, but more of a pass through. Yes, um, let's find a quiet spot, um, right. especially away from those guardians. They make me nervous. Of course. Sure. Uh, yeah, you uh, begin sort of making your way towards sort of around trying to avoid this this main gate that seems to be the main sort of way that you would access the tower you begin kind of drifting off um and yeah you, you can find like a section of wall and you look around you think you're fairly safe obviously you know those flying guards might come by um you'll be pretty exposed uh because also casting the spell will drop the invisibility yes but you said we were about an hour up anyway so yeah so you're pretty much going to run out of that anytime <laughs> soon anyway um so yeah uh I'll look at Tiangong. You, you ready? Um, and then um, I imagine Tiangong would almost carve a beam of blue light into the surface of the wall that would just glow briefly. And then almost like a mirror illusion. You know, like if you go to a circus fun fair and there's like a hall of mirrors, like mm. it would just have that kind of illusion effect where it goes through. And um, yeah, the stone would peel back and there would be a short passageway appeared mm. um can you roll because i've been reading the spell and it, it specifically says it mm -hmm. creates no instability in a structure surrounding it so i don't think it's mm -hmm. breaking the rule but can you roll a d20 yeah. and add your charisma modifier for me straight up d20 let's hope it's not a one or a two 
him before it's a three. It's a nine plus five, 14. 14. Not bad. The spell works. You see Tian Gong, you kind of carve the shape, the, the kind of uh, image stretches and mirrors, as, as Nova said. Um, Tian Gong would probably say, uh, the enchantment built around this palace and this object sufficiently was significantly powerful, Nova Vija. I believe whoever created it is aware of what we've done. Um, but you do see this patch passageway appears, yes. Small problem. We've mm -hmm. alerted everyone. Let's go! Uh, oh. right. Okay, oh, now, the kind of, like, run screaming kind of alerted, or move for quicker kind of alerted, because that changes how I react right now. Um, move quicker, well, well move quicker is always better than it's... screaming. Yeah, if we could just have this conversation while we're walking through the wall, um, quietly and calmly, but... You, you do know, begin like to hear pace. heavy creaking stone, like stone moving. You hear like... <laughs> so whoever created this enchantment uh, it knows we're here. Um, and I can hear stone moving. I can hear stone, I can hear stone moving. Oh, that's the Get through the let's wall, go. everybody. Oh. Chop, chop, chop. <laughs> yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you, you guys run through and, uh, yeah, you, you, you get to the other side of the wall and you can see that there is maybe a sort of, um, sort of 50, 60 foot open space to the walls of the tower. You've gone through the wall of like the outer wall around the tower. You are now sort of crossing to the tower. You can see that the actual doorway entrance leading into the tower is back towards where the gates are. So you would, and you can see now when you look sort of, you kind of uh, take a moment, it's all sort of curved, flat, polished stone with kind of gold filigree, like beautiful gold, thick gold bars uh, wrapped around in the shape of roses and spirals. Um, maybe sort of a hundred feet up, you can begin, or maybe like 60 feet up, you begin to see like an offshoot tower kind of being built and separated. Um, but the main entrance to Heartspire Tower itself is back towards those gates. Um, and if you glance that way, you do see uh, a giant stone pour just... What's the plan? You got like a, a round here to decide how where you're going. We said that if these were guardians, anything like like your guardians, then you might be able to guardian them. You know, guardians, Bill. They're, they're not. They're not. They're, they're golems. What's the plan? Otherwise, these things are going to basically come around towards the positioning this. that we're in. Is there nowhere to hide? We're just exposed right now. This is like a big open plaza. Like, this is kind of like, you know, like Buckingham Palace, you have like the gates and then there's like big mm -hmm. open space to the actual palace. It's kind of like that. It's it's purposely done this I way. I thought we were in offensive. the tower. I thought no, that the I door was, was made on the tower. It's a perimeter, outer perimeter wall. wall. Yeah, perimeter Exterior wall, wall, yeah. Yeah. Can I see That's all the guardians any point? Like, are there... like, um... oh, sorry, are there windows in the tower? Like, can I see through a window? <laughs> Uh, there are windows, but they're up high. There's none on this ground level. You'd have to go up to see are them. Are they 500 feet up high? Um, uh, as in, like, if you wanted to see a point on the other side, you would need yeah. to be eye level with them to see through, basically. I need to be eye level. Okay, cool. Which is casting cool. mirror image in advance of the okay. threat. All right. Uh, the first creature around the corner, as, like, Nova's, like, looking around, unless anybody else has a plan, is you see a large stone lion um, steps around the corner and its eyes are glowing. Uh, I need pretty much all of you guys to make uh, a constitution saving throw. Um, as this thing looks at you with these glowing eyes, you looking at it, you feel some sort of effect. Uh, you'll get plus three from me. Every year. 26. So, oh. 29. Okay, uh, everybody gets plus 17 three. or lower. I think no, we've all succeeded. We've all succeeded. Uh, I will now roll for MP Sheesh. Uh, we all got above 17. Holy crap. Yeah. I don't think that's ever happened. <laughs> ever. Make Six a wish. years. Woohoo! I feel so alive. <laughs> <laughs>
Not for long. So you guys, like, you feel some sort of, like, thing hit you, and you have to blink, and you feel, like, some sort of magic um, sort of, like, wash over you as this thing's glowing eyes. Uh, and you, you, you feel okay. Like, you felt, like, a momentary paralysis, um, but then you come out of it and oh. look fine. Um, you, you, as you're kind of, like, looking around, you feel okay. Before we roll initiative, you hear Thalia basically say, like, no! Uh, as you see both Kyrie and Rosemeadow are stone and that's going to be roll initiative oh oh hey how shit <sighs> shit well big initiative oh now i roll like dick <laughs> shit how do we Restoration. Uh, because you guys have gone like to the side of this tower, only one of these statues is actually able to fit in the space and like make its way towards you. But you can hear that there is the other statue is like behind it somewhere. It's probably trying to come around the other side of the tower. Uh, so um, I think just Ayla initiative I need now. 18. Mm. 18. All right. Nice thing DD Beyond just literally loaded it all in for me. Um, Stone Kyrie's go. Lucius, you are the first one to act. Kyrie's uh, go. At the start of your turn, so Lucius, um, you can choose to avoid uh, avert your gaze from this lion, like it's 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 like a basilisk or a medusa. You can basically at the start of your turn say, "I am not going to look at this thing." If you do that, you can't see it, and any attacks obviously are like as if you were blinded. You have disadvantage and all of that stuff. Um, but you can choose to basically be like, "I'm not looking at this thing." Like I'm going to cover my eyes, or I'm going to shut my eyes, or whatever. Yeah, I think I'd avert my eyes, for sure. Uh -huh. I'd also... I think everyone else would understand <laughs> as well. So I don't need to call that out. Mm -hmm. I guess yeah, I'm yeah. just everybody, gonna... Everybody knows this. Like I'm saying this to you, but it's technically for everybody. At the start of your turn, you decide if you're going to look at this thing. Right. In which case, I'm going to look at the ground, the feet, the paws of where this statue is and then cast a vitriolic sphere there um, yes okay point so you're choosing a space a just, point just so you know like i'm gonna look at the pause it would still the the magic of this thing is it's not just looking into its eyes like if it's if you're looking at this thing it takes effect but you could basically like look at the ground and guess where that point is and be like that point you know 20 feet beyond all right there. yeah i yeah. mean it's a 20 foot radius sphere so i feel like yeah, i just yeah, cast it in I mean. front yeah. of it and it exactly, just... you can still attack it. I just don't want you to think like, oh, I can look at its feet and therefore I can still right. cast spells on it and stuff like that. If the spell says a target you can see, you have to choose to look at this thing and then, then you get the effect. Okay. That's so, what I'm trying to get across. Yeah, deck save throw, 18 to beat. Oh, I mean, yeah, I don't actually think it can pass. Even with, um, it does have a uh, magic advantage, uh, but it's a six is the highest. All right, so... I will do the damage. It's not very much. Wait, that was a lot. Just That's a level D4. Fourteen D4, at like... like... uh, level four. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Oh no, wait. That Any was ones? level six. Sorry. One second. I'll redo that. Okay. Sure. Ten D4. Still quite a lot. And ones are twos. <laughs> so. Uh. Twenty-nine points of acid damage. 29 points of acid damage. Am I within 30 feet of it? Right um, blah, 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 blah. I've got to work this out now. Um, if you guys made your, I would imagine that you guys had made quite a far way round. So it's probably not within 30 feet. This thing is probably... Actually, no. Yeah, it is within 30 feet because of the, the effect. Yeah, so we'll say it is within 30 feet. So that's nine points of acid damage that gets flung at him uh, at the yep. statue afterwards. <laughs> Okay, what happens right. to me? <laughs> uh, I mean, you're not looking at it, right? You said you weren't looking at the creature. Well, I was thinking so... of the rules of this area. Uh, nothing. Nothing happens. To okay. Me. All right. Hmm. Test in the wars. It seems we can attack, but just don't look at it. Nova Vija. You can hear something like Curious. rumbling on the other side of the tower. Wow, I oh god, I did not bank on that not doing anything. Um 
It definitely did something. Like, the, the gates themselves, like, attacking, like, these things head-on would have been very different to kind of getting around the side. Because um, right now you're dealing with one of these things. There is another one. Yeah, is, no, uh, I, I I more meant the uh, rule of three. Ah, I was expecting Lucius to get... You can make an intelligence check. Cremated. You want to make a free action intelligence check to try and be like, yeah. do I know why that didn't work? I would, like, I would like to know, do that. Your characters uh, are smarter than we can, but like, you know, you could, it's like Zarkira, like retcon. Oh, stuff. come on! I rolled it. It's come up in the algorithm as an eight, but on my screen, it's a 20. Like it's cocked oh. on a 20. Oh, oh. What a crock of shite. Well... Even you know, well, Digi dice can cock themselves. <laughs> Dear Dear Beyond, Dear Beyond um, sponsoring the show. Dear we appreciate everything you do, and we love yeah. your tool. <laughs> Not sure. Not sure why. God. <laughs> it, no, it, no gives that realism. Anyway. it gives that realism of real-life dice. Thanks, Dear <laughs> Dear Beyond. Turn, 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 turn. turn. <laughs> yeah, Halo, I'm going to... Um, the and then Sentry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a tentative Eldritch Blast, because I'm still not... I'm, I'm Are you looking at it? this? Oh, that's a good question. Um, is it magical? Is it maddening darkness time? Um, no, I'm not looking at it. I'm gonna fire wild. All right, disadvantage on each attack roll. So first one is a twenty-nine uh, or an eighteen to hit. Does not hit. Eighteen doesn't okay. hit. Mm -hmm. Glances the maybe like it just glances the outer edge of the stone, but not enough to penetrate it. <clears throat> Twenty-three or sixteen. I mean, these, these a giant stone statue. Sixteen. Nope. Yeah, no. These no, are like dense-looking marble statues. Like Nova is just far, like because also you're not aiming right, so you're just like blasting yeah, indiscriminately. Yeah, yeah. And these glancing hits where you do kind of like try and catch it on the side where you're not looking just doesn't bite deep enough. Like the beam doesn't penetrate through the thick stone. Hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think right. our RP wise, I think Nova is just so worried about Thalia and everything. She's just not. She's not thinking. She's not tactical. She's yeah, just yeah, kind of. Sense reacting on gut instinct um mm -hmm. and yeah not very smart today sure uh that's um, um okay uh you don't want to move or anything like at the moment you're 30 feet away from this um, thing um you're kind of all clustered in a group yeah i will oh, i want to grab thalia's hand and like mm -hmm. like try and pull her away but i'm guessing that's probably like an action um to kind um, of pull her away just just half um, movement if you just want to like carry her but she's she'll go with you on your turn on her turn she'll move wherever yeah, you want I'll, I think I'm just going to instinctively grab her hand and be like, we'll come back for Kyrie and Rosemeadow. We, we have to move! And just okay. run as far All as right. I can. Ayla then Sentry. Uh, I will run up to it, not looking Are at you it. Look not looking at it. Alright. I will hit. I'm going to rage and then I'll hit. Nice. Please. Oh my god, I got a nat 20, but I also rolled a 19. So the 19 oh. plus 14 to hit. Damn it! <laughs> that will that will hit, but it's not a natural 20. Um, nope, I know. Yeah, the, the hammer, even though it's a wild swing, the creature is large enough and you can swing it with enough force like that even mis-aimed, this thing is still going to cause significant damage. Uh, 15 damage on the hammer <laughs> plus 5 lightning damage. Okay, yeah, the lightning damage does, does that seem do to anything hurt. to hurt me? It does. Uh, no. No, it doesn't do no. anything to hurt you. No. Okay. Um, I'll hit again. Uh, 13, oh, oh, it might miss. Hang on. 9 plus 14. No, it won't. 23. <laughs> Will it? 23? It's... Yeah. That's, yep. that's the low roll for me. You never know. Whoa, whoa, just drop my dice though. Uh, that will be a... Oh, I rolled trash on my damage, though. I rolled a 1 on my damage, so 14 with the hammer. And 2 lightning. 2 lightning. But yeah, these two wild swings, please. they do connect. But, um, you know, yeah, the uh, this thing is definitely quite tough. You can see the, the stone does break away as the hammer strikes and things like that. Deck saving throw. It's garbage at these. Uh, 12. 17 lightning damage. 17 points of lightning. <laughs> So you see it's like huge chunks of rock have been blown off this line now and it definitely kind of like <laughs> stumbles back. Um, 
yeah. Anything else, Halo? You know what I'm saying? Nope. All right. I've moved bonus action, action. Sentry. Wait. Um, I'm going to move up to Kyrie, but like raising my shield to protect my gaze from the lion. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. Can I use a cleansing touch on Kyrie? Try and end the stone. What does, what does cleansing touch do? You can use an action to end one spell on yourself or on one willing creature that you touch three times per long rest. For an action. This is not a spell, I'm afraid. So ah, damn. This is the petrificate, petrified condition. This is not a spell oh, that has caused okay. it. To. It's like a basilisk Dang. gaze or a medusa's gaze. Oh. So yeah, you touch you touch Kyrie's shoulder and it just she remains cold stone. Perfectly rendered, like lifelike stone stone sculpture. There's nothing I can do. Oh, they both um, they both failed their saves quite significantly. Oh shit. Anything else? Um. I'm just yeah. I'm just gonna take a defensive position, maybe like in front okay. of Quill. All right. You hear from the other side of the tower uh, something drawing closer. It basically spends all of its movement to move, dash around the side of the other side of the tower, and is trying to basically get on your flank. It's trying to get behind you, basically. Um, you can also, yeah, no, I don't, I don't think you would. So that's that's turn Quill. Um, do I still have my arcane eye, or was it at the end uh, of the hour? Uh yeah, I mean, it was nearing the end of the hour. I think, like, yeah, like, you can have it up for a second if you want. Yeah, sure. I, can I, I want to look at this thing through the arcane eye. That's a great fucking question. <laughs> really stone now. Now you're diamond. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Sell me. Guess you're not directly looking at it then. Yeah, it's kind of like looking through at it through uh, through a mirror and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Like uh, like the classic fighting Medusa and using the mirror shield and stuff like that. Uh, arcane it, it transmits I images to me, right? Like mm. I mentally receive visual information from mm. the eye, mm. but it's not. You're not looking my at my eye. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. I would say that this counts, but I would say that you've maybe got like two rounds of this thing left. Like it's it's okay. pretty fucking That's close fine. to being loose. You cast it a long time ago, so yeah. So but I'd say you've got like at least a few seconds left of the arcane eye. Looking at it, can I determine mm -hmm. how it is perceiving us being completely made ah. of stone? One thing I will say actually, because it just uh, another creature took its turn. Um, okay. Just before, like, as you're looking at it, Quill, as, like, Ayla and Sentry have both done their stuff, you watch as its eyes, which have been glowing like a bright blue this entire time, its eyes stop glowing. Okay. Um. Hmm. All right. Uh, how, how is... Can I determine how this thing is perceiving us? Is it magically or is it, like, through stone you eyes? Have, I, actually... I don't know how you would know that. Like, it is a stone statue. It's looking at you. It had glowing eyes. It technically, actually, I think it's its eyes stopped glowing on its turn. Um, okay. So it's not. They haven't uh, stopped glowing yet, but they're about to. <laughs> they're about to turn off. They're dimming. <laughs> yeah, they're dimming, dimming, basically, yeah. Well, okay, either way, I think regardless of, of what, whatever I perceive from it, I, I wanted to cast uh, blindness slash deafness on it. I want to do blindness on it. Um, so can I can I cast this through the arcane eye without still looking at it even though the eyes are dimmed it's probably safe to look at now but can I use the arcane eye to cast I mean it, it, it's not an action or anything to look through the eye right like you just you close your eyes and then you receive mental image of from the arcane eye right I just get it as an action yeah. I can move it and yeah, it's just, just, you, yeah. you can see but you're not using your eyes so you don't trigger the petrification effect Great. I will cast blindness on this thing. It needs to make a, unfortunately, a Constitution save. But I mean, it is a spell, not. so it has magic resistance against this. Oh, that is a twenty-three. Shit, twenty-one. Also, this is the lion. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, technically that's not elemental damage. Um, okay, yeah. No, the spell unfortunately does not seem to take effect. Like the root, like its body is covered in like engraved with like runes and sigils. They pulse mm -hmm. for a moment, and the spell doesn't take effect. It saves against. It saves against. Okay. It. Uh, I don't know if it's safe, but its eyes are dimming. I, I take from that what you will. Might be yeah. good to look at again. Uh, what's Crank Cat's intelligence? Uh, sorry. Uh. Uh, Big Cat's intelligence. Not super great. Big Cat, unfortunately, doesn't quite understand not to look at this thing, um, and will look in its direction. Uh, and you see Big Cat, like, turns to, like, bound towards this thing to fight it. Like, it's like, oh, an enemy. It turns, and Big Cat turns to stone. You just watch. I roll a one. One is saving through. A one. A one. Um, okay. How much? How many greater restoration casts do I have? <laughs> yeah. Great question. Uh, the creature, it's got Ayla. You've moved up to it, haven't you, Ayla? So you're like right in front yep. of it. Yeah, it's just going to basically, it just tries to fight Ayla. But you do notice now on its turn, its eyes stop glowing. Um, okay. Uh, but yeah. It's well, I wouldn't know it because I'm not looking at it. Yeah, you wouldn't know. Nobody it. knows. Um, so it has advantage. Uh, so that's a 25 to hit. Yeah. This is normal slashing damage, so you're going to half it. So it's 17. That would go down to 8 against you, Ayla. Attacks you again uh, with advantage. Because you blinded. Uh, that was a 20 to hit. Was its highest? Just. Just hits. So that's going to be another 17. So half that, that's another 8. There's the natural 20. Uh... So 30 total. So that's going to be 8, 16, 24, 30 plus. Uh, 43. So half that to... Fucking hell. Jesus Christ. A crit. A crit. Uh, so Did 21 it? points of damage. God. They're just, and it's like hitting you with these giant stone paws, just like pummeling you into the ground. Um, trying to like, yeah, just fend you off as best it can. Um, and we go to a fresh new round. Lucius. Wait. Vitriolic Sphere, the end of his turn, 5d4. Oh. Whoa! Acid damage. <laughs> <laughs> and that is 12 points of acidic damage. Uh, I mean, you watch as that acid that you sprayed over earlier is like melting <laughs> chip, breaking part stone. Um, well, yeah, right at it, it. It, it's definitely that you, yeah, it's not your turn. It's now your yeah. turn though. What do you want to do? Like you, uh, you I, were averting your eyes. You weren't looking I at look the thing at Quill, And I look at it. I shrug. <laughs> cool. Yeah, you look at it. It's safe until it glows again. To look at it, that is. Um, whilst <laughs> blasting a chromatic orb, classic, uh, fifth level, plus 12 to hit. And that's a 16, so that's a 28 to hit. That hits. Um, can I hear the other statue? Coming around the corner, can I see it? Um, if you move thirty feet, if you sort of like move thirty feet towards it, you could probably see it. Yes. Can I build us this orb whilst mm -hmm. moving back thirty feet, mm -hmm. and then peel it into two orbs and twin them? You can to fire at both. That's pretty funny. You run around the corner <laughs> with this peeled. You kind of pull the spell apart. You run around the corner. You throw it at the first one. <laughs> You throw it, and, you, and then you see that this other one, this elk, its eyes are glowing. I need a constitution saving throw, Lucius. This one is... Oh, shit. Would he get a plus three for me, or is he too far away? Probably too you far move 30 feet away. You're all safe. together in a group. You move 30 feet away. 25. Oh. You succeed. <laughs> uh, so you feel again, Fuzzy you're dice. like, you see it, and you're like, oh. Um, and yeah, you feel like this effect kind of wash over you, um, but you manage to you manage to resist it. Um, and yeah, twin spell. You're you're looking at it, so you make the attack with normal, you no disadvantage. You you're not blinded, so. So I'll do one at a time. Yeah. So this will be the. Uh, same damage do roll. Both? Yeah, one damage roll, and then make a separate attack roll. That's actually thirty nine points of acid damage. Jesus Christ, Lucius is tearing this thing apart. <laughs> and am I thirty feet away from this? Elk. You're 30 feet away from both of them at this point. Oh, no, you're 60 feet away from the lion. So, yeah, you're 30 feet from the elk. I will throw my Dichromancy at 10 points of acid damage at that one. As okay, well. 10 points. Did you roll an attack against the elk yet? You haven't yet, have you? 
No, I'll do that. Yeah, if you can do that for me. That one misses. Do you want to do anything about that? I could use two points. I will use two points. Let me check them off now, otherwise I'll forget. I have used a lot spell. of um, things already. I basically replenished my spells after doing the whole burning through the briar wall thing. Yeah, uh, but you only with... you only spent like two first levels, and you had a long rest before then, so. Yeah, well, I had a third level fly as well. Oh, that's which I... <laughs> Oh yeah. Cheers, boo. You're welcome. Um, so I will re-roll that. Sorry for the delay. So that is happens. better. Twenty-four. That hits. Yeah. So that was okay, thirty-nine, so... wasn't it? Yeah. I've already done the 10 for the Dichromancy. So yeah, like you watch as Lucius like sprints off, woof, two orbs. The lion is now like, you can see its front paw is like nearly completely separated from its body. Half of its chest cavity has been melted away. And then the damage that Ayla's done to it, like it is barely still standing. But this elk now kind of comes barreling round. Lucius like, Ugh! Uh, I, I look away after off. that, um, after yes. feeling that wash of... It's only at the start of your turn you need to worry about it so much. Um, all right, done, Lucius. Done. Nova Vija followed by Ayla, followed by Sentry. So the elk, um, without looking at it, I want to cast Synaptic Static because I choose a point within range, which is 120 foot, and cause psychic energy to explode there, and then a creature within a 20 foot sphere radius will take the attack. Yep. So. Does that work? Yeah, so, um, can... Does it um, does it say anything in Synaptic Static about uh, what kind of creatures it can't affect or anything like that? Like, does it still work just against anything... constructs? Uh, yeah, it doesn't say yeah. anything about constructs or anything. Just anything does with anything an intelligence the... score. Lower than two. Two or lower. Yeah, it works then. Yep, it, it triggers. Um, can you make me an intelligence saving throw DC 18, please? I can. I do get uh, advantage because it's magic resistance, but having minus... Uh, four, which is an intelligence of three, which means it's just barely affected by it. I don't think it can succeed, so... Um, no. I'll just start it rolling fails. this dice then. Yeah. Um. Oh, it's nice. a beefy roll. It's a beefy roll. Hell yeah. That's 37 points. 37 nice. points of uh, psychic damage, yeah. and it is muddled. Nice. Yeah, it's muddled. Consider it muddled. Um, yeah, get Lucius, muddled, elk boy. If it's all right, uh, when you hit the lion with your chromatic orb, it did have a reaction. I'm trying to track two different things here. So when the spell hits it, those runes on its body do pulse. Ayla would take 10 points of... Did you do acid damage? Yes. Ayla would take 10 points of acid damage. Ah. It kind of... It kind of um, it kind of like pulses out some of the spell energy that that hits it. It kind of like blasts it outwards. <sighs> um, it's just like a little it's ten points of damage, man. You're fine. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, so no, <laughs> that's an absolute static. Anything else? Um, no, I'm gonna keep moving and just keep pulling um, Thalia away and just where, telling where are you pulling to Thalia to? Because in I guess... one direction you have the lion. Now you have the elk in the other direction. Sort of in the middle. I, I imagine we're going towards the spire. Right, like, no, is, the, the spire right? is in the middle, but the entrance way is towards the lion. Like there is no entrance oh. where you are where you are. Like the entrance okay. is towards the gate where you came in, which is where the lion came from. You right. are kind of like in a curved kind of plaza, like a kind of semicircle. You've got yeah. the big tower in the middle. There is no entrance way near you. So you've got a left and a right lion elk. Are blocking basically they filled like the yeah. space that they're currently occupying in in that case can i just at least like you know I, I guess just yeah there's probably no action for this but just sort of like getting thalia behind me and be like don't look don't look don't open your eyes don't do anything well maybe yeah. do do stuff like defensively but just just don't look don't look at them <laughs> thalia literally <laughs> says nova i was a medusa for 400 years I fucking know how petrification works. <laughs> um, she's got her eyes shut. In fact, actually, I, no, she does, she's like, I don't need to have my eyes shut. They can't petrify me. Oh. Um, what? And she, she was immune to oh, yeah, She didn't yeah. make a saving throw. Right. Um, whatever, the Medusa curse has still meant that she can't be petrified. So. Wait um, a minute. She... Okay. Uh, Ayla. That would have been really useful to know. Could have been uh, so the lion I can look at now because his eyes are yes. not glowing. 
The eyes are not glowing, yeah. So Qu and Quill said that. Quill like I also that. confirmed yeah, it. Uh, mm -hmm. So 16 plus 14 hit. 30, yeah, Three. that's a hit. That's a hit. That, that's a hit. That is a... Th 20 on the hammer plus uh, 5 lightning damage on the first one. Mm -hmm. And then again, uh, that is potentially going to... Well, what's that? Uh, 5 plus 14, so 19. Doesn't hit. 19 yeah. doesn't hit. Up. Yeah, the hammer it's kind of... Just missed just ages. Yeah. That sucks. I mean, yeah. Um, so, deck save. Well, it's missing ages against creatures that have like 20 AC. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was like, fuck, like five or less is the only way she misses. Um, and then like, uh, and then deck save, yeah? Yeah. That's yeah, a fail on this as well. Yeah, eight fails. 17 damage. <laughs> okay, the lightning destroys it. Fuck me. Oh my God. Uh, nice. So you watch just like Ayla, like, well, also like Lucius's acid has like melted it down so much. And then Ayla's like first wave of attacks like broke apart one of its limbs. And now the lightning just surges up and you just watch it completely crumble. Like it just turns to gravel and pieces of statue. Um, completely, completely decimated. Is the, the direction that, are we equidistant around this semicircle? So or are you we... guys are kind of in the middle. I did. I had a battle map which wasn't this, so I'm kind of doing. We're in the middle. Months. You guys are in okay. the middle. No, the line was thirty feet to the left. Let's say you moved up thirty feet to engage the lion. The elk moved round and is now sixty feet from the group, thirty feet from Lucius and Nova. So, and that's to the right. I will move back to my original uh, thirty-five feet to the in the, of the group. towards the yeah. Yeah. Oh, 40, you can go 45, right? Yeah, 45. What am I talking about? 45. Okay. Yeah, so you're uh, halfway <laughs> between Sentry, Quill, uh, and Lucius yeah. Nova. You're kind of in the middle of those two. All right. But I'm not cool. looking at it. I'm just moving in that general direction. You're going to start averting your gaze. Okay, Sentry. So you can see Lucius and Nova about 30 feet away from you, and then they are fighting something which is just around the corner of this this uh, tower. Um, you just can't see it just yet. Um, okay. Um, can I move 30 feet around the tower, and then can I misty step up onto the elk and then like use my shield to cover its eyes? I have a, there's one, there's, you can do this. There's only one exception. Misty step, you have to be able to see where you're going, which means you have hey. to look at it. I risk a little look at it. <laughs> That's the question. It'd be fucking cool. Rolls? And like, you, you definitely think that like, you could definitely like misty step onto its head and then with your shield and maybe with your body, like block its eyes. You, you could probably definitely do that. It'd be like a grapple check. Hmm. Sure. Let's do it. <laughs> I didn't need to say anything. Rhiannon, I love to fucking hear it. That's a I don't know why we wait for her to think about it. We know what she's going to do. Yeah. Well, she <laughs> she's going to do it. She's thinking about it. 20. Yeah. Succeeds. Succeeds. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yeah, you kind of like in whoosh, a burst of uh, a golden light, you reappear on top of the thing. Can you make a um, athletics uh, uh, strength? Just d20 plus strength. strength. Eighteen. Eighteen. You just barely. This thing is really strong. Oh. Like it's like neck muscles, but you manage to kind of like grip onto one of its antlers. You plant the shield over one of its eyes, and then block the other one with your body. And it, but it is trying to throw you yeah. off. It's like shaking its head, and like this is uh, Shadow of the Colossus kind of like, oh. like trying to get you off kind of thing. Um, its I body just, kind I just of screamed down like. Right. Shadow of the Colossus down, like, is incredibly good sort of visual reference for like yeah. their runes and the kind of engravings on them oh. and stuff like that. I just uh, shout down to the group, hit it now! It can't see! Okay. Yeah, nice. It's blinded. Um, on its go, yeah, um, the other lo the other uh, stone guardian is down, so it's eyes of Mesmera remain. Um, this thing is just going to try, like, yeah, it can sense, like, sentry on its head, and sentry, it's gonna slam you three times by, like, basically slamming you into the wall of the tower three times. It's just gonna be like... Okay. <laughs> Jesus! On its That's horns. Brutal. Um, uh, that is a 13. Nope. 
That's a 25. Yep. That's going to be 18 points of bludgeoning damage. Whoa. And then 22. Yep, just about. That's going to be uh, 19 points of bludgeoning damage. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Uh, yeah, that's that's its turn. Quill. Um, how uh, shit does this guy look? Uh, how much shit, hot. Like, I mean, like it has? It, it, it's uh, Lucius's orb has definitely melted parts of it. Um, that okay, seems so to be not, the main. Not terrible. Uh, yeah. Uh, I will fourth level. Nova as well, right? Yeah, that's not really visible. That's the only problem. <laughs> like yeah. the synaptic right. static is all brain damage. So <laughs> I guess uh, so. psychic damage. Oh. A fourth level guiding bolt. It give the next person advantage as well. Plus okay. thirteen. Oh, I just had a thought. Um, a was bit. Nova muddled it as well? Nova did muddle it. That yeah, would have affected true. sentries. That is hits, true. Potentially. Um. So is that is that a D six? I subtract Nova. Yes. All right. That'll do it for the first one. Three was a twenty five. Would have brought it down to a twenty two. That would still hit, right? Yes. Yeah. And then the second one. Would have missed actually, so okay. that was 19. 19. Heal yourself, 19 century. Okay. But in also as part of that, this thing when it slammed you, I should have had you make athletics checks to stay holding on when it was like slamming you. Um, so can you, you can, do a, do can you do a uh, one athletics check? You took one damage. Yeah. Uh, you took damage from it once. Is that the um, end Me of four. its turn as well? You're fine. Uh, that was the end of its turn, yes. And then it gets to uh, save. You can make a save it through, yeah. It can't physically pass. Uh, if I roll a natural, because the DC's what? 16 or 17? 18. 18. It can't pass. It's literally like, yeah, <laughs> intelligence. It can't pass. Okay. Um, wow. Okay. Cool. All right. Sorry, Quill. Go ahead. Um, is, is the creature technically blinded now then? Mm, I, I am kind of viewing that it can see enough, but it's stopping the sentry stopping the petrification effect. Because okay. like a shield and like her body isn't enough to like stop it being able to see completely. It's stopping it being able to use this ability though, is how I'm sort of Fair viewing enough. it. Nice. Uh well I rolled an eighteen to hit. I was wondering if I would have got advantage on it, but Sammy eighteen won't do it. That's a fourth. Do it. Yep, I just it's a fourth spell up that tower is why I hit the instead. nature of its you know runic stone body deflects the spell nice uh and that's pretty much me i well i guess i'm now standing in the open there sentry's not defending me so i'm like mm. uh, uh, cool. uh, you can make a perception check for me though uh oh perception i'll always mm -hmm. make a perception check when asked plus 11 natural 20 31 um, you can see, yeah. I mean, you you can see uh, there is at least two of future. those flying. You can see that there are two of those. Um, the Irenes, you can because you've got true seeing. You can see them. There are two Irenes basically flying down. They're going to be here in like a few seconds. Um, oh like, they've, god! They've heard god. the sounds of the fighting and they're, they're coming. We got more um, coming, guys. You can also definitely hear there are like sounds of like you know uh, alert horns and things like that blowing. Uh, like Nova said, we've alerted everybody. Lucius. It's time for real. Right, we should make our way into the tower. We have a path. Just have to dispatch this golem, I assume. Or maybe it can't fit through the doors of the tower. You know. yeah. yeah. You didn't really get a good look at the, the actual doors. Well, I've got some range okay. on my cheeky chromatic orb, so I can start making my way past the downed lion golem towards mm -hmm. the front entrance and uh i'll throw out a uh the only problem with that is the tower would then be blocking line of sight lucius you'll need to attack oh first i need to stay really... there okay yeah, yeah. i'll do it's uh... kind of like round the corner kind yeah. of thing it's hard to oh. hard to visualize without like uh, i got gotcha, uh, yeah. an accurate representation but yeah like the tower is big enough that like there's only this narrow space and like if you move too far along it does block the line of sight no worries so that's <laughs> 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 a two so I'm going to use two more points of my magic. I'm down to seven now to do that again. We roll. Seeking, Seeking spell. spell. Ha, it's that one! <laughs> <laughs> Sadly, like, you conjure the spell. I'm trying to not like hit sentry, so I'm like... Yeah, yeah, it's like you're trying not to hit sentry. <laughs> this thing is also like, unlike the lion who is a bit more stocky and like was attacking Ayla, this elk is just like going mental. It's like bucking, it's like throwing its head around. It's just hard to hit. Uh, I'm going to continue to use my 30 feet of movement to move. 
move around. All right, come on, let's go. Nova Vija. Um, so how how far am I from the the tower? This door, um, is it? Um, so it'd be thirty feet to the lion, and then I would say another thirty. Uh, yeah, it would be cause it would it, it moved, it dashed, and then it moved on it. So it's it's about ninety feet. So it's thirty, and then 90. yeah, thirty thirty. Okay. Yeah. Are there any windows above? Yeah, like, there are windows above. The but yeah, they're they're high yeah, up. They're like I... you're probably. If I was to like fly up to the window, am I like? 30 foot from it, 60 foot, 90 uh, foot. You, you can try. Um, yeah, well, it kind of... Um, my idea was I would use the gravity gauntlet to cast mm -hmm. fly, which is 30 foot of fly. Mm -hmm. And then because I oh. could cast the arcane gate through the window because it's within 10 feet and one on the ground. Right, I think is using um, the gauntlet an action? It's a bonus action to cast okay. fly with it. Right. And then action to to cast. Sure. Um, That's what you want to do. Um, if if it's within the distances, then yeah. Yeah, you when you cast the amethyst lodestone fly, you can't fly. Oh yeah. Couldn't fly, could I? Whoa. So you, you <laughs> try and channel the power of the gauntlet, like you're like activate anti gravity, and then it's just, <sighs> it just, it just you can't fly. Well, that's oh, bust. You may as well throw that away. It's never worked. Yeah, just put it in the bin. <laughs> put it in the bin. Just get rid of it. Um, so one thing I don't think I ever gave the flavor for Quill, by the way, is like, it's not just that you can't fly. Like, you don't actually really remember how at the mo at the moment. Like, th oh. this whole time you've been oh. in Heart's Fire, you're like, how me fly? <laughs> <laughs> how do? It's kind of like, yeah. it's yeah, like it's repressing your knowledge of how to fly as well. Damn. Oh, that's cool. I can't remember how to use righty and tighty. That's not their names. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, it's so over bonus flat. action. You've used that. Doesn't work. Still have move and action left. Okay. Um, I'm gonna <laughs> then. I'm I'm gonna blast. Um, Elko. Not Elko. Okay. The, the El <laughs> <laughs> Don't want to make this real personal. <laughs> you know. <laughs> um. Okay. So. That is a 28 to hit. Wait, it's... no, sorry, that's Tiangong. Uh, just just can, minus two from that. You can move up and if you want. No, uh, right. just Miss minus you. two from that. That's still yeah. a 26, so. Um, 11 points of Damagios. Sure, force damage as well, uh, nice. Beam uh, one. 13 on beam two. Doesn't hit. What the? Yeah, it doesn't hit. 13 on beam three. First beam hits, but yeah, the other two just this this thick stone is deflecting all these spells and things like that away from it. Um, end of turn. And I will move. I will move towards door yeah, where Lucius, Lucius went. Okay. Yep. Well. All right. Uh, so you're basically back more towards the center of the group now. Uh, Ayla. I will is, just why, before why they do disappear. Go, like what do we that? do about the petrified friends? And then I I'm will. On I'm on it. Uh, throw my hammer at the elk and uh run the same way as um nova and lucius okay. please sure that is uh 13 plus 14 to hit that will hit yeah um oh i rolled a 10 on my d10 so that's 23 on the hammer uh oh wait no this is my hammer throw so 23 on the hammer and then uh two Seven, eight, nine. Don't learn Fourteen lightning damage, please. Remember, like cracks into its chest, and you see these big, deep, heavy stone cracks spread out from the center of the elk's chest, and then the hammer whoosh, back into your hand, flies back. Still up. All right. Sentry. Your um... friends are all running the other way. <laughs> 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 And now they've all left, and they've all run around the corner, and you're on your own with this elk, basically. Okay. Um, it, is, it is injured. Like, uh, this thing at this point is now yeah, quite heavily okay. injured. Can I, like, just, like, wait for a moment where it feels a little bit more stable, and then bring my spear down into its head? You can. So remember, at the moment, you've got one arm, like, yep. holding on, your shield covering thing, and then your body. If you want to attack this thing, you have to let go of the grapple, 
and then you decide um, are you going to look at it are you not going to look at it and and deal with you know whatever happens because the second you stop grappling this thing like yeah you need to decide whether you're looking at it or not hmm Unbe Uh, no, I'll do the spear thing. I'll do it. So you're gonna you're gonna let go, drop, and then are you gonna look at it or are you not gonna look at it? Are you gonna try and attack it blind or are you gonna try and attack it normal? I'm gonna do it blind. Okay, All right. So you're gonna keep your eyes closed. It's disadvantage on the attack roll. You <laughs> land in a cool way, superhero landing, and then you bring lance, starbreaker, and shield up, and you can attack. <clears throat> disadvantage on the attack rolls. One. Oh, 19. Not enough. It, Damn it. it hits the stone, but it doesn't it just doesn't break through. Can I try again? Yeah, I mean, you've got two attacks. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, well. Action to let go. Oh, it doesn't look like it. No! Oh, wasted oh. 20. There it goes. I keep on your eyes your shield up not looking where you're striking it's just you can't uh, find the purchase to to truly strike um okay, okay. all right That's uh, yeah. on its turn it's going to do two things uh the first thing is it looks down at you don't see this but it looks down at you and from its eyes it fires a beam i need you to make a wisdom saving throw please sentry okie dokie it fires its slow ray this is uh, not magic. So. 14. It was a it rolled to a three. You are slowed, I'm afraid. On a failed oh. save, a target can't use reactions. Its speed is halved, and it can't take more than one attack on its turn. Um, and you can either have an action or a bonus action, not both. Um, right. And then it basically brings two of its hooves down on top of you uh, to follow that. So 18 is a miss. Oh, it Subtract has advantage. Well. I, I will. It has advantage because Sentry's not currently looking at it. It misses on its first attack anyway. Uh, so we'll do the next one. Oh, nearly a natural 20. So that's a 24 <laughs> or a 28. And then I will minus a d6. But even if I get a 6, it's still going to yeah. hit. So yeah. So 22 to hit Sentry. Yep. You're going to take. Oof. 22 points of bludgeoning damage. Just one of its oh. hooves kind of like, <laughs> smashes down <gasps> on you. <clears throat> uh, well. Uh, I'm going to run to, um, I think, Rose Meadow first, mm -hmm. uh, in hopes that she has the same as me. I want to cast Greater Restoration. I have uh, the ingredients for five of these. Um, you cast Greater Restoration. Does uh, it have just an action one to action? do? Ah, one action? That's what I was ask. Yep. So you watch um, as you place your hands, the golden feathers of Hesper and Quill uh, kind of merge over, and you watch as the stone begins to crack and break. Um, and when she comes to, it's just like, Rosemary is like, that thing's eyes is going! <laughs> and she like, looks around like, what's Rose happening? Rosemary, Rosemary, Rose Rose do oh. you know how to cast Rate of Restoration? Like I just did to you. I don't know what that is, but maybe. Try it on those over there. Okay. <laughs> uh, and uh, and that is basically my turn. I'm now yeah, next to them, and that was an action to do. All right. Okay. We got we up go. to the top with Lucius. Right. So... Even Lucius, by the way, now that you're... Because you're running towards the entrance, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can see maybe sort of 100, 180 feet up in the air. Two of these figures, two of these elven knights are flying towards you. Okay. I'm going to stay where I am for now and wait for everyone else to catch up. But I'm going to mm -hmm. hold an action um, to cast a chromatic orb at any of those things that come in range of 90 feet. 90 feet? Okay, that's good to know. Uh... I know I need to look up. Just to kind of protect <laughs> uh, anyone that's running towards me, basically. I know, it makes sense. Uh, do, 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 do. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna get there. Um, all right, Nova Vija. Okay, I've got a crazy idea. Okay, I love them. Love and it crazy depends ideas. on how close. I'm still going for these windows. It depends how close I am to one of these windows. I want to. Okay, I know you said no fly, but what if. I reverse gravity around me to make me That's go a great up. Question. Great question. And then cast Arcane Gate. I mean, I'm not going to tell you the um, answer. If you want to do that, you can do that, and then I'll tell you what happens. Okay, but it's an action, so this will take two turns to do. So it's an action to reverse gravity using the Amethyst Lodestone. 
Um, and then the next turn I'll have to do Arcane Gate. Um, but I don't know. I, I, my theatre of the mind is not working today. I can't figure out how far away from I mean, keep in mind that you're going to have the same problem with Arcane Gate that you had outside the wall, where the second gate has to be on the ground within 10 feet of you. So, yeah, but my idea is if I'm up near a window, like, pressed against yeah. it, that's why I'm like, you know, it's within right. 10 feet, surely. Yeah, the, like, the one on the other yeah. side of the window is, where are you putting it's the 10 one? Feet on the floor um, so that other people can get through it. But you'd be higher than 10 feet. Using the... These windows yeah, are like the one... up in the air. He's using the first one as the anchor point. Yeah, yeah. the second the one, one inside the, the window. Yeah, yeah the one I... inside the okay. window is the one within 10 foot. And the one right. that's within 500 foot is down right, the ground. I see. So I okay, go now it. I understand. You're yeah, flipping it around. Yeah. Okay, I see that. Yeah, yeah. okay, 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 okay. Uh, yeah, I mean. Can I do it? I mean, yeah, do you, do you do it? I mean, I'm not going to uh, tell yes. you whether you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say whether it works. I'm going to say like, you tell me I'm doing it and then I'll say what happens. I'm just going to try. So, so if I, I presume I'm up near the spire as an action, I'm going to expend the charge on the Amethyst Lothone, res reverse gravity around me. So I go up. Just around you. You want to, because it's a 50 foot radius that you reverse gravity. In. Is it? So you're going to, oh, sorry. So, yeah, 50 foot radius, 50 foot radius, 100 <laughs> foot high cylinder centered on a point oh. within range. So you can try and do it like inside the tower so that it only catches like you. You can, I'd, I'd say that there's enough wiggle yeah. room where you can position it where you can just catch yourself. Yeah. As long as you basically like Thalia go over there, I'm going to go do yeah, this crazy Thalia, thing. Yeah, go over there. My sure. love, my heart, my desire, go over there. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so yeah. you do it, yeah? Uh, I need you to make a deck yeah. saving throw for me. Oh, yeah, uh, okay. make a deck saving throw for me and then I'm going to tell you what happens. Because it definitely works. Go it doesn't break the flywheel. <laughs> Eight. Yeah. So what happens <laughs> is you get into position, you cast reverse gravity. Yep. I mean, this is like you now fall upwards. Mm. This isn't like a gentle, yeah. fizzy lifting drinks float. You just go whoosh uh, and you fall 100 foot into the air. Um, mm. You f fly past the window. You just whoosh. Uh, you are now at the, mm -hmm. like near the top of the tower. Um, but there is, mm. there is a large window that looks into... Mm -hmm what appears to be a kind of like a throne room. Um, mm -hmm. And y yeah, at the moment, uh, you are also going to take 10d6 points of bludgeoning damage from falling because it's sure. you impact on like the ground, like, on, on, on reach the top on the of the roof, area. Like, oh. um, for solid objects. If, oh, so she hits the roof of the tower. There's like an arrow. I think it's, oh, no, yeah, no, no, it's, no, it's, 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 it's only if it hits the roof. It reaches the top of the area without striking anything. It remains there, oscillating slightly for the duration. So you're just gently spinning <laughs> like, outside this window in the air, flipping um, between the two different versions of gravity that you've just made. Yeah. Yes. Like for it stops, I guess. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, oscillating. <laughs> it's going up and down. So oscillating. Yeah. So like, yeah. Uh, yeah. I want to I mean, know what kind of a noise cool. Nova made when she propelled from the ground into the air because I, I feel think, like there would have been a sound. You'd hear the start of it, but you wouldn't hear the end of it because I'm up in yeah. the sky. <laughs> 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 yeah. But yeah. 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 Uh, so yeah, you're currently um, hovering there in place. Um, yeah, uh, I can't do anything else because it's do an we... action to do Arcane Gate. Yes, do we have people is following the answer, us? Mark. Yes. Yeah, okay, we have to wrap up there. Uh, I think that that's the point where we have to wrap Aww. up. We got like we got literally three minutes to wrap this up. Um, oh, fair enough. Damn, yeah. Uh, yeah, like uh, yeah, it's like that's why I was like we got three minutes. I just wanted to well, see what cool. Nova's crazy scheme was. <laughs> I mean, it's a good thing. Right. Reverse so gravity funny. has like an aura, I suppose. Otherwise, Nova's gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's like a, a height limit. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, yeah. If it I'm did, space. She's in space. I think it's. I think somebody said that like it's something like six hundred feet or like four hundred feet is like what you fall in like six seconds. And I would have been like, you're four hundred fucking feet in the air now, dude. You're like, you're up. Yeah. But no, it doesn't have enough. Here's the great thing. The, the idea is, well, that is I looked at this. I look hundred feet. I, I well, I looked at this on the amethyst lodestone, which just gives you a sentence. It doesn't tell you the whole spell, so I didn't know yeah. all the extra terms and conditions. Yeah, I was just like, like oh. "Fucking run up!" I fly. Well, I yeah, yeah fly. it doesn't it's say any of this. Yeah, right. I remember looking at it for doing. back when I had Alora, and it was like reverse gravity for a bunch of people. And yeah, if they hit a ceiling, they take damage, but also you can just, just cancel cool. it, and they all just fall to the ground. Drop. 
from 100 oh, yeah. feet. No, no, no. That does Don't worry about the that part. Idea. Nova gets to do that after she casts Arcane Gate yeah. because one portal yeah. will be on a w on the other side of a window. The other one will be on the ground. Didn't think about that, did I? And Nova will still be stuck up in the air. <laughs> yeah. Oh. I'll have to ask someone oh. to open the window. I'm just going to have to get someone to open, open the, the window, window for me. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Hey, Ayla! <laughs> we'll get back um, on the elf again and we'll go for the window. can't damage the window, not in this place. It's against the rules. We'll carry on the conversation. Hey, you are on, on yeah, high we're going to carry it on High Rollers D&D. &D. <laughs> Other place, Yogscast, thanks very much. We'll see you uh, next week. Come join us on High Rollers D&D &D if you want to hear us talk about this. Um, thanks very much. Bye. Um, bye. Bye. Yeah. Bye, Yogscast. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't think this through, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, also, I, like, when you said I'm using like, reverse gravity on myself, I was like, it's more of an enemy one, that one, but okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it works. Desperate like, times. Was, like, it is it not works. breaking the rule of grounding. Like the rule, because the rules have specific wording, which you guys don't know because you you literally have She's to go grounding the wrong way. Fuzzy. Well, it, I mean, yeah, like it's just falling isn't flying. <laughs> falling with we're style. Not, we're yeah. falling with style. <laughs> yeah, but that, that's exactly. the thing, because it. It literally, all I can see on the item is as an action, expend charges, revert to cast reverse gravity. So I didn't think, maybe I should look up the spell reverse gravity and see what the terms and conditions no. of this are. So I just went, let's that's, go up. Yeah. That's fine. That's um, my life yeah, now, it's fine. I was really worried about how long it was going to take you to do this as well. Because how long is Arcane Gate up for? Like, like forever. Oh, it's forever, is it? Oh, okay. I yeah, it's it until you. One. It's it like until it ends. Not forever. Not forever. But it's I thought while. it was the not forever, six but a while. Ten minutes. Like, Ten minutes, okay. Ten minutes. I was like, well, it's I guess we're leaving three. someone behind petrified. Uh, yeah. I, I, I will say it's concentration. Is it? Yep. Wonderful. Mm hmm And ten D6 uh, of falling damage could have uh, has a chance of breaking that. So <laughs> we'll see. Remember, we'll see. Look, remember, Kim, speedy thing goes in, once. speedy thing comes out. Put the ball below you. Speedway oh, yeah, right into the town. No feet <laughs> <laughs> into a wall. It's just I know. Like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> into the room. Cut oh, into oh, in Somebody Mera. catch me! <laughs> <laughs> catch me! Like a bullet. <laughs> yeah, we'll just <laughs> aim it. Aim it for the throne. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll deal with the this consequences those, next this week. Is one of those ones where, like, I I had a bunch of stuff planned. There was like, th this was like, you know, I've got a series of encounters because I think that this is going to be a situation where it's like fighting smaller bad guys, like I, those guardians. That obviously, the petrification scary, but um, you know, I'm fairly sure you guys would make short work of them if you fought them. I had the other demons and stuff. This is one of those cases where Kim has literally just bypassed a ton of shit. <laughs> like, like, <laughs> going, like, Hi. All 100 feet. I've bypassed this clever rule. I go in here um, now. Wee! <laughs> just I might die about. doing it. Yeah, there's still a lot of. Happens. I mean, the there's thing a lot is, of stuff you, between you now to, and then. The I love that. You have to love arcane shit. gate, lose your gravity, then take the falling damage, and try and hold concentration on arcane gate. Unless someone opens the window. No, unless or someone unless opens the we window. Can, we can all get through before the inevitable blue missile fires through the gate. I'll just. Drop on the Irenees, it's fine, they'll catch me. <laughs> uh, uh, one, one small clarification for you, hardcore high rollers fans, by the way. Uh, I am gonna, I didn't announce it at the time. Uh, Armador what wouldn't have gone to the palace with them, Armador left them already. Armador has gone off to find Polinella, he is not with you. Oh he my god, he died away. off screen. He didn't even say goodbye. He did not die off screen. He did not die off screen. We but, probably got uh, preoccupied as we saw the whole demon reveal. He probably was like, "Well, it's about time." Well, it was, he said that he was like he he had his own thing. You guys were going to the palace. He was like, "You're going to the palace. I'm going to go do my thing." And then he's gone. Off. Yeah, fair um, enough. Cool. Um, amazing. Well, there you go. We'll finish amazing. The fight really fun. Next week. Really cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm dead. I'm so dead. And, uh, yeah, you're, those you're, you're dead. By the way, constitution saving throws from the whole party. The fact that you all fucking nailed oh yeah. Those. Holy pretty shit. good. Well. I know. Like, They're my so the only strength. It, the petrification effect, like, yeah. It, for me, it's like, I expect, like, Sentry and Ayla to do well, but, like, Lucius, Quill, and Nova, who, you know, Constitution is, like, my okay, but plus seven. Oh, I mean, I guess, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's really good, um, actually. Plus if you three. fail that saving throw by more than five, so if you get a 12 or less, that it's instant petrification. Like, it, there's no, like, slow build-up. It's, like, instant. So, like, when you all wow, got, like, NPCs over 20, well. I was, like... No, yeah, I was not. like, oh. no, like, well, the NPCs have like plus three to their con save. They're just like, oh. and then with centuries, it was just like nothing. 
Um, you know, mine, yeah. mine's plus two. Uh, anyway, he's, he's one of the boys you need to get rid of. Yep. Uh, we had a donation from Raymani, uh, and they say, Hi, rollers. At last, I am three of the Bolt Squad. Welcome. Having a grand old time watching live, and I hope you all have a great evening. Thank you very much. You too. <laughs> I am a robot, 012C, uh, with a full ass hundo. Whoa. As well as. Oh uh, my God. Thank you. Subs earlier. 50 gifted subs much. earlier. Yeah, and a full hundo you. donation. Amazing. Amazing. Have thank a you. high roller birthday dono. Beat Bob. Happy birthday. Thank you. Bob. I'm a robot. Uh, Carrots of Love. Uh, has donated with Clear Skies VOD Squad for us tonight, but wanted to say happy sixth birthday. Enjoy the stream. Please protect the sweet dandy boy, and of course, roll high. Uh, he's protected by leaving us. Oh, look at that us. text. So rad. Whoa. Wow. Pretty good, right? Oh, text dot gif. So dot, cool. dot gif. Hello, 90s. Um, that text is Flavortown. Geocities. Engage. <laughs> uh bonafide has donated with a quarter hundo clear skies from the happiest place on earth happy birthday although i only just found you guys during the lockdown i've truly enjoyed the uh, oh, all cool. the amazing stories and welcome character. thank you and can't wait to see the new studio well if you support us Woo. on patreon you'll see it um heck yeah uh ace of thorns has donated with yeah let's just napalm our way through this barrier of thorns no one will think that's aggressive or destructive right well they haven't so uh, far apart from a goblin yeah, so <laughs> um all this and a double cat break hugs to all thank you very much uh crispy has oh my god crispy has donated six hundred dollars oh, excuse me Whoa. Whoa. Why what? do you do this, Crispy? <laughs> yeah, uh, six hundred dollar dues from Crispy. Amazing. Uh, wishing you all a very happy sixth birthday. Here's to many, many more. Yeah. Thank Holy you, crap. Is it six and six? Best. Like, because it's like six, six, six anniversary. Holy six, shit! Six, How did you? I didn't notice that. Uh, fail has donated <laughs> with. Happy anniversary. Congrats on six years, guys. Oh, six. Six hundred. Uh, and happy <laughs> belated birthday. <laughs> uh, I'm me. going to murder you. Yay if for you the January him. babies. And <laughs> I'm not stressed or anything. Why would I be? Yes, of course. <laughs> Fail. Happy birthday to you as well. Um, oh, yeah. It was the oh, first yeah. birthday as well. Yeah. Thank you very happy much. Happy birthday. Thank to you very you. much. Uh, everybody, uh, and also let me do a quick refresh. Uh, we had some gifted subs from Idani Ken, thank you, and five gifted subs from Slime Dice. Uh, we also had uh, fifty dollar dues in bits from MK Thirteen Wolf saying, "So well, hey, it me, MK the Jokey Boy. Great to see that six years of my life have been blessed with your game. I sincerely hope it continues. Thank you for both the great times and." The patience at me and my jests. Uh, pee pee poo poo. I don't know. Got no joke this week, Soz. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Can't, can't be funny much. all the time. No. Pee pee poo poo. My excuse. Uh, and that is everything. Thank you oh. very much, everybody. Uh, check out the Patreon. There you go. That's that, that's my push. Boop, boop, boop. Thank you so nice. much. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate it. Um, big shout out. Thank you, Crispy, as well. Super generous. Um, thank you to everybody who donated. Super generous. Um, thank you. Yeah, yeah. We will be back next week. Uh, keep keep checking out the Twitters. Uh, find out what's going on. Check out the Patreon. Check out D&D &D Beyond. Good old lovely sweet D&D &D Beyond. Um, until next time, take care. We love you. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.